right, all right, all right. What's going on, everybody? How you guys doing? My name is Ian Robinson, and I am the lead ZBrush trainer here at Maxon. And we always try to make learning ZBrush as fun as possible. That's like my number one goal. So if you're here, feel free to ask questions. It's going to be a really cool stream. Uh, also, too, I just kind of wanted to re I actually wanted to go over a few things before we started, but of course we have a sphere here, so we're going to be going into some fun stuff. Real quick, I'm just going to go ahead and see about turning on some uh, music, of course. So let me just do that real quick. Log into Pretzel Rocks, all that good fun stuff. How is everyone doing? Hopefully everyone's doing okay. I do wanted to um, to let everybody know that uh, I was uh, actually out for the last couple weeks. I got a little sick, but I'm happy to report that I'm back. Everything's well, so it's a lot of fun. So, uh, yeah, um, let's actually, real quick, I just need to log into my Pretzel Rocks real fast. It signed me out, so that's no big deal. Let's see here real quick. Let me just log in. How's everyone doing? Hopefully everyone has had such a wonderful, uh, has had a wonderful day, week so far. We're already into March, which is crazy. That's that's crazy talk. Like, what is even happening right now? Okay, here. let me type. You guys ever type in your password and then you're like, oh man, I messed up one character. So now I need to retype in the whole thing. <laughs> Let's see here. Yeah, you can go ahead and say that. That's fine. Well, it's fine. Let me see here. Request it. Oh, you got to do that two-factor, that dual two-factor authentication stuff. Keeps you safe. Boom, boom, boom. Luckily, I, my uh, my Chrome, uh, my uh, my keyboard thing, unfortunately, no one works. So, okay, great. We're logged in. Let's go ahead and, of course, hit play. So hopefully you guys can hear the music as well. I always like to share that stuff. All right. What's going on, Crimson, uh, Myers, uh, Aiken, Sparky Face, and Witch Cat Crochet? What's happening? All right. So today, what are we doing today, which is going to be a lot of fun? I'm going to go ahead and pull up my reference. Uh, we already we did the crane uh, already from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I wanted to get into maybe doing some more substance stuff with that a little bit later, but when I got sick, I just hadn't had time to really work on it. So it's pretty much finished on the modeling side. We just need to do a few other things to get it going. So I'll continue that project later uh, or finish the substance side and stuff later. For right now, we're gonna make this guy right here. So boom, boom, boom. Look at this little guy. So freaking cute. I love him. This was actually drawn for me quite a long time ago by my girlfriend, Casey. So shout out to her. She actually drew this a little bit ago. I want to say actually now going on like five, five years now. So yeah, but you know, been, been a couple days. So it's about time I actually model it. So we're going to be doing a chibi Deadpool and I'm super, super excited. Chase, no worries. Uh, hi -o. Uh, hopefully I said that right. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, you can't say you're at work. No big deal. I totally understand. So, the fact that you're here now is all of that matters. So, boom. All right, let's get my tablets. I'm rocking the Sense Labs 24-inch display. So, let me just pull this sucker forward. Let me get my pen, my glove, and let's do it. Boom. All right, so we're gonna be doing a chibi block out. That's gonna be super fun. And then let's get into it. Let's also adjust the mic a little bit. There we go. You guys have tell. You guys can tell. I haven't. I haven't streamed in a, in a couple days. So let me get right back into. It. So yeah. So we're gonna be going on this guy. So first things first. We obviously need to do a body block out. So we're gonna go ahead and just hit save as. And let's go into my OneDrive 2024 projects. And we're going to call this the uh, DP Chibi. I haven't sculpted a Chibi in a little bit, so it'll be fun to try this block out again and see what I've, uh, uh, see what I, where I've come from. You know, like how long it's, man, words are difficult. It'll be interesting to see how I approach it this time versus like the last time I made a Chibi, I think it was like two years ago. Uh, so... And I'm thinking about making this one animation ready because I want to do some more project with some Cinema 4D stuff. So we're going to go DP underscore Chibi uh, block out. And this will be block out underscore zero zero one. That's two. Boom. All right. 
So let's get going. Let's get crack line. And of course, too, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Sparky says, "Hi, I love it. It's so it's uh, so fun to des of a design. Yeah, absolutely, right? It's super cool. The the if you guys can tell, there's a reason why there's a giant <laughs> cup of coffee in the actual uh, reference. So this will be a lot of fun. Okay." So one thing I've learned is that chibi proportions are basically the, to the size of two heads, but there is a little bit of like this head right here. If we take a look at some measurements real fast, so let's do that. This is super important in the design phase. And I like to do this. Um, I like to like call this stuff out as much as possible. So for example, let's go ahead and just take a plane real fast and let's do this. Let's actually reconstruct a little bit so we just have low resolution because I want to give this some thickness. So we're going to use a Z modeler brush and just give it a little bit of thickness so I can rotate it on its side, turn perspective off, and then this way too we can kind of see what is happening. So let's move this up like this. So if I were to put this at the top of his head and then use the gizmo, drag that out, say something like that, that's about where that would be. And then if I were to do one more, you would see right now that this character, even though he's hugging the coffee, his feet don't quite go to the second. Let's get a different color. So, oh, I zoomed in on here. Let's move that back. So if we were to line up the, the line from here to here, you could see that this is about one head side. So it's about one head. It's a little bit, you know, there's some spacing and stuff involved, but that's about one head size. So if we were to, we can back this up one more time, of course. Let's actually make this even skinnier with a different color so we can really see, pick all the colors. So if I were to, again, call this out, we say right about there, boom. So we have the, this is about one head, and then this is the size of another head. And you can see that his feet doesn't quite come to the bottom of that, which means that if he were to stand up, his body would be the proportion of an entire head. So these are things that we want to call out immediately in the design. So this will be our kind of guideline into how to keep that structure. So here we're going to call this chibi guide or height guide. So this way we kind of help make sure that we honor ourselves and we don't, we don't just kind of guess what that size would be. We actually figure it out. So we want to make sure that we do that. What's up, Ryan? How's it going? Leonard, buddy, what's happening? Ryan Darley, there's two Ryans now. We got Ryan McAlee and Ryan Darley. What's happening, buddies? How are you guys doing? Are you going to make that so you can attach it to your real cup of coffee? Leonard, Leonard, buddy, man. Love the way you think, dude. I love the way you think. Of course, man, absolutely. Of course we have to do that. I wanna make an animation ready one, but then of course we gotta hook it up for that. Dude, everybody, Leonard gets uh, uh, 50 max on points. <laughs> They're like the Gryffindor points. We're just gonna hand them out the candy. Okay, so now that we have this, let's go ahead and, now what I like to do, of course, is Let's, uh, let's actually shrink this down like this. Okay, I'm gonna actually set this right here in the center so that it is truly in the middle. And we don't need this super lengthy one. We just need the scales to be something like that. So we're gonna hide this guy though, of course. And we're gonna duplicate this and we're gonna put this down below. And this of course will be the DP head. So let's go ahead and do that. Now what's fun is of course that we want to kind of get a little bit of an anime style head going on here. So we're going to kind of just give ourselves a little bit of play. He has such a round head. So what we're going to do is we're going to control copy this. I'm going to go ahead and just do the block out method. And that's a huge shout out of course to uh, my mentor and old teacher and friend Shane Olson. Taught me how to do this a long time ago. Super fun. So now, of course, we want to make sure he has nice big cheeks and a nice big forehead. So we're going to really honor this by pushing this in. And this material is the not so good material to see. So, and you know, we can just turn off the lines if we wanted to. Okay, and I'm just more focused on getting the right 
roundness and stuff like that. Getting a little bit of that jaw. So we can always make this, we're, we're bound to this guideline. So we can actually scale this up and bring this down a little bit. We just want that to fit right inside. We'll isolate this. And we're just going to have this kind of wrap around. Now faces, here's some fun anatomy tip. Faces actually draft. They draft from the center, right here from the center of it, and then they draft backwards, right? So we wanna make sure we solo this out a little bit, that when we look at it this way, we have a nice angle happening that's just drafting backwards a bit. So when we do this, let's just back this up for a second. I wanna make sure that this gets pulled back and it angles in. And of course, we'll have some nice space for his eyes. So we're gonna pull that in just a little bit. And of course, too, we're gonna to want those cheeks coming out. So we're trying to get just a nice profile. Let's see here, give him the brown pants. <laughs> yes. What's up, Travis? How you doing? What is up? Oh man, we have a lot of people. Groovin' Magic, waving. Hello, how you doing? Hello, Kratix Brit. I didn't see you. Didn't see you in the chat there, but hello. Everybody's calling you out, so what's happening? Good to have you here, Brit. Okay, here, real quick. I gotta check, I gotta check my pretzel rocks here. I gotta make sure it's on YouTube safe. I'm hearing lyrics. We can't have that. No lyrics. Okay, hold on one second. Let me just kick over there real fast. Here, I'll just pause the music real quick. Let me make sure my settings are correct, Amundo. Oh, it is uh, set on YouTube safe. It's only set on instrumental. What are we doing here? What are we doing? Okay, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and skip this song that we have going on. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but we definitely want to not have any lyrics popping in. Okay. All right. Boom. I just like having a little bit of tunes. All right, so let's turn Solo back off. Is everybody excited for the new Deadpool and Wolverine? Because obviously, obviously. It's midnight right now. Uh, is Xingying? Is that how you say it? She, she, ye? or she? Hopefully I didn't butcher that. I'm so sorry if I did. I like to try to pronounce names as much as possible. <laughs> Okay, so this is actually, yeah, this is actually pretty cool. Okay, so again, I want, what I want to make sure that I do here is that I honor the overall shape of the head itself, but we want to actually be able to have like a nice good round. So let's pull this back just a little bit. Even though the head is mostly circular, what I want to be able to do, he's, it's, a, it's going to be a mask, so there's going to be a face, say, right about here. Give me eyes right about here. And also too, I'm gonna to wanna to pull this down a little bit because it's going to be, overall the actual shape of the head and stuff like that. It, the face is at the lower third of the actual head. So we wanna honor that as much as possible. Now I wanna give him a nose a little bit. So we're gonna give him a bit of a nose here. And we'll do a little bit of a smooth. Now, I'm not gonna worry about that too much. We're just gonna get the main head shape in there. And then I actually might kind of pull this in just a little bit. Just a little bit, honoring an actual head shape. Okay, so we have that. Now let's go ahead and let's get the body. Now we gotta focus on some proportions. Yeah, awesome. Okay, very cool. <laughs> Um, so we want to now focus on some proportions. Now the thing is, is that when you're dealing with real anatomy, obviously with a human character or humanoid type character, the thing to remember is that proportions are super key and you know, you want to make sure that you have good volume and everything kind of lines up. So we're just shrinking this down and we're simplifying it. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to work on quote the rib cage. So we're going to scale this guy down. Here. And I'm going to focus on just the body part of it too. So I'm going to, let's go ahead and, this is actually, 
Okay, now what we need to do, I'm smoothing and nothing's happening. If you are working on your model and you're smoothing or you're trying to sculpt and nothing's happening, and you see that I have a reference up here, what this indicates is actually that under samples, we have spotlight projection turned on. That's on by default. Anytime we use spotlight to hold our reference, it's going to engage the projection part, which allows ZBrush to take a look at the image and actually display not only the color, but sculptural changes as well. So it's trying to do that with the move brush or the smooth brush and it just won't let me do it. So I have to turn this off. And now when I turn that off and I start smoothing, boom, there you go, it's, it was able to do it. So with that turned on, I wasn't able to do anything with the smooth because it just it's protecting from the sculptural element. So we're gonna go ahead and just do a light smooth relax. So I'm pressing shift for the smooth, start smoothing and then I let go and it relaxes it and gives me a little bit more of a warp. So, and now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to use Move Infinite and we're going to get kind of a teardrop shape for the body. And the reason why I'm using Move Infinite is I wanna infinitely make sure that it's equal on one side to another. So that's gonna grab all the way through the model. Matthew says, by the way, the ZBrush gloves I got from you last year are good quality, better than the Wacom ones. Oh, wow, awesome. I'm glad you guys love them. We're gonna have, if you guys are gonna be at events like NAB, I'm gonna be at GDC, so I'm gonna see if I can grab a pack of gloves and come up to GDC. And if you see me walking around or at the Sense Labs booth or at the Dell booth, that's uh, March 18th through the 22nd, so in two weeks time. So if you're up there in San Francisco, I'm gonna see if I can get some gloves um, and possibly some ZBrush bracelets. So if you see me, come say hi. Grab a bracelet, grab, grab, bleh, grab a glove, and that will be there. What's up, Chris? How you guys doing? What's up, man? Okay, so now we have kind of just like this, this kind of teardrop shape here. Now what I wanna do is get the legs in, and then I'm gonna wanna get the arms in, and then we're gonna match what we want. Now, this is also a little bit too, uh, too rounded, so we're gonna just kind of square that off just a little bit. And again, that move infinite is just really allowing me to make that changes on both sides, just like such. Okay, cool. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just control drag and get this copied. Now I'm gonna split this off actually. So I'm gonna go to split unmasked points and then I'm gonna pick this guy and this, so this will be the torso. So just for now, I'm gonna name stuff, even though we're gonna end up merging it and making it one mesh. I'm gonna call this the torso, and then I'm gonna call this the legs, okay? And then I'm gonna turn off symmetry. So we're gonna hit X for turn that off, and we're gonna kinda of get this in here. And actually, I'm gonna scale this down, and I'm gonna move this over. And then let's go ahead and adjust this a little bit. So we want to make sure that we don't give them too skinny of legs either. Like that's something we definitely don't want to do. There we go. There we go. Hey, what's up, Chris? How you doing? Yeah, so if you're going to be at uh, GDC coming up, I'm going to see about getting some gloves. Some of these ZBrush gloves, because I have a couple. I have a couple. So I might be able to bring a few. Let me see what I can do. So this is me saying, hopefully, maybe. So yeah, if you're at GDC, let me know. Okay. So we're not gonna lose sleep on the size of that, but I'm, what I'm aiming for is about half the body size. And you can see that that's, that's, that's almost there. Maybe that's a little bit. So we'll just raise that up into the body. And then I'm gonna control drag this down again. And what I'll do now is we'll hit Q and control W to just go ahead and do that. And now we'll shape this guy. So now we're gonna end up shaping the lower part. And I'm not gonna worry about too many proportions, but here's the thing. I definitely want to make sure that we at least have some accuracy with the way the leg flows. So I don't have an ecroche here. However, we do have one built in ZBrush. So if we come up here to tool and we go ahead and grab this anatomy model. So even if you're doing stylized, 
don't be afraid to reference real anatomy. And if we take a look at the front of the leg, you can see here we have a few apex points. So if I were to draw a straight line, straight down from the inner thigh, right, you would see here that we actually have a nice tapering going on. So there's actually a bit of room between the inner thigh and the inner knee and the way that the knee flows, right? So the way this is going, what we wanna actually do is I'll actually put this over here and we'll just take a look at this. So I'm gonna go Shift S to stamp that. Let's go back to our chibi guide and let's kind of reference this a little bit. We're not going for true realism, but we're going for enough. I wanna ask how many, let's see here. Um, some great questions, by the way. Uh, can you do like very basic for us, uh, start learning ZBrush and what tutorials to do next? Uh, Cause you do self-study. So ha 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 he, love the name by the way. Uh, yes, actually we have a few things for you. So my streams right now are dedicated to, you know, starting in ZBrush all the way to advanced ZBrush. Um, however, if you want a tutorial series that's 100% free, get you understanding ZBrush a lot more and just get you into it, you can actually go to, and let me just come over here real quick, pop this up, and I'm gonna send this link in the chat, but if you go to the maxon.net and you go to learn and understand diversity, we also have a bunch of YouTube videos as well, but you can see here we have a getting started with ZBrush, you'll just click that. And I have Anna Carolina here, who was amazing and actually coming on and helping us record this series. So I'm gonna put this in the chat for you right now. Boop. And that is going to definitely get you started in ZBrush. Now, there's other assets to this. If you go to uh, YouTube, of course, and you just come up here and type in um, Ask ZBrush. This is a long-standing series that we're looking to get into another actual um, uh, season of. We haven't done a season in a little bit, uh, just because of the transition and everything that's been happening at Maxon. You know, it's been it's been very uh, it's been very fun trying to get things organized in a way. So we want to come up with a new series. So here is a Ask ZBrush series. If you got specific questions, there's over 500 videos so far, so a lot of information on how to get started quick, fast, and in a hurry within ZBrush. So you got Cineversity, the Getting Started series, as well as this. Yep, yeah, you also have Michael Pavlovich on YouTube. There's so many great people on there. So even, uh, I don't, I'm not as active on my YouTube as much anymore since I started working for Maxon. So the majority of tutorials that happen on Maxon side now is, is uh, under my team. So I, my personal YouTube has not been active in a while, but some of my stuff ended up on Cineversity as well, like how to make a cam view and some other stuff and also some polygroupit techniques. So, but you can always ask me as well. I'm here to help. Okay, great. Okay, so, but those are all super perfect for getting, getting started and learning which is the most important part because we all got to start somewhere. And I'm like you, I'm a self, I'm a self learner for the majority of it until um, I ended up uh, going under Shane Olson. Actually, my first teacher was uh, that I picked up, I self taught for about a couple years. And then the first official teacher I went and I looked at was actually Dave Igo. And Dave was super amazing. Um, but uh, yeah, super, super awesome dude. Um, but then I ended up like needing help with my artistry. And then that's when I reached out to Shane. So, you know, sometimes a mentorship can be very helpful and beneficial, of course. So, but if you're self-learning, you can do a lot with the videos we provide and we try to make them as easy and user-friendly as possible. So those are really great and highly recommend. There's also ZBrush Live, so just like this, there's more than just me on here. There's a ton of artists. We got Ashley Adams, we have Shane Olson, and Michael Pavlovich, we have Pablo Munez, we have Eric Keller, we have uh, Arik Morgan, we have uh, just a ton of people on the list. Um, sorry if I, didn't, <laughs> if I didn't, there's a bunch on there, but you can actually um, just follow this channel and just hit that bell notification anytime we go live. You can see a ton of artists on there. It's just so many people. It's amazing. Actually, uh, Tamal Whittleblock, he just went live last night. He does jewelry. So if you're into making jewelry, then that is definitely something I recommend as well. So a lot of fun stuff. All right. 
Okay, so here's something to really point out too, is that legs taper backwards. Legs are never like straight up and down. They actually kind of taper backwards. Think of yourself as like, you're kind of falling when you're walking, but you're catching yourself. And legs always have just a little bit of a, of like a taper back a bit, just because of the way it is. Like it's, it's very interesting the way you design. Like I've designed legs to be really straight and then they just end up looking wrong. So I give my legs just a little bit of a taper back, just something that's just, just a little bit. And that's usually enough information to get me in my leg correctly. So let's go ahead and control W this, turn that wireframe on and actually make this a new poly group. And let's get that. And now we're gonna go ahead and give him feet. And you can just see here, I'm repurposing a good chunk of my uh, mesh. And here, we're just gonna shove this back, say something like that. And now we're gonna shape this. Just get like a halfway decent foot on here. And I'll show you real quick how to get a nice flat foot. But what I'm gonna wanna do, I can see that the foot that she drew is pretty rounded. I mean, it's like very oval, uh, egg shaped almost. But what I'm gonna do to make it 3D a little bit is um, just kind of give it a little bit of an arch, just a teeny bit of an arch, nothing too complicated. I don't wanna overdo it, but I want a little bit more of what the foot should be like. Say something like that and then we're going to go ahead and take the clip curve and we're just going to grab the clip curve so control shift together grab this and slam that down to the ground which will get that nice and flat i'll give it a little bit of a smooth yeah something like this and then for this back side what we're going to do is we're going to start pulling this in just a little bit all right i look away for a few seconds and boom we got some stuff Okay, here, uh, I wanna ask how many times it would take. Oh, that was the next, uh, how many times would what take, the sculpt itself? Um, it depends. Uh, for, for however long, honestly, when you're starting out, it doesn't matter how long it takes. That's the real answer. It's, it's not gonna matter how long it takes. However, at the end of the day, the thing I want you guys to remember is that when you're just practicing and you're getting in there, it's about quality, not quantity. You know, you, you're gonna have a lot of time figuring out what to what to what did you right and what did you wrong but you know if you were on a professional level a lot of times depending on the studio if you're in video games a full character might take you know eight hours a day for three to four weeks that's a good time for a full character start to finish um, it just depends on the project um, when i worked at funko so if you don't know i used to work at funko and i used to make uh, pop digital and uh, actual physical pops and what was really cool about that was um, it was a fast paced environment. We would turn around a pop within a couple days. Like day one, if they gave you a concept and said sculpt this, in one day you should have the, the sculpt pretty much blocked out and locked in and ready for a first view. Um, which is not that difficult actually, when you think about it. After the more you practice, the easier it gets of course. But yeah, you I would say that that's, that's about the time frame in which that would happen. And so, you're just kind of like, you know, it's a little bit fast paced, but you get used to it really quickly, right? So ultimately at the end of the day, you know, that was our turnaround. So within a couple of days, I'd say two to three days max, your pop should pretty much be finished unless we had like licensor issues or licensor approval that they were just like, you know what, actually I wanna do X, Y, and Z. So um, that sometimes happens, but for the most part, it just depends on where you are. But when you're getting started, like you're just in ZBrush for the first time. I don't want you, even the first few years, don't even stress about how long it takes. Just enjoy the making process and learning because you'll actually get so much more out of it if you just sit there and enjoy the process. So, great question by the way. Um, there's a few other stuff here too. Uh, let's see, I've sculpted a few human, a full human figure with Dynamesh and now I want to sculpt the mouth. My issue is that I have no honest idea about how to go about this with Dynamesh when I try forming the inner mouth cavity. Dude, that's a great question, Tech. So you know what, let me finish the leg block out and then I'll show you a good way to approach that. There's a great way to approach that. There's two ways you can approach that. Um, 
and one of them is Dynamesh, and the other one would actually be with Z Modeler and a Remesh. So I could definitely show you. Um, yeah, yeah. So let me go ahead and get into that. Okay, great. So let's actually, I'm going to solo this. So I actually used a primitive IMM to just block in a real quick knee here. So then I kind of have an idea of where that's at. And I'm going to make, knees are kind of shield shaped. They're kind of, you know, just something like that. I'm just going to kind of shove that in there a little bit. And the reason why I want this knee right here, it's just going to be when I weld this together. It's going to be a little bit more. Now, if you're doing this, if you like to work with big brushes and you're like, man, I'm pulling this around and I can't, I pull this and then I pull that and I pull this. Don't worry about that. What you do is just kind of get it in place. If you want that to intersect more, just go up to brush, go up to, um, go up to auto masking, back face mask. And now you can just pull that sucker straight back. And that's going to protect the ability. If you don't know, that's going to protect the ability to if i got a big brush it's only gonna it's going to only affect the front facing normals that i'm grabbing and the back face is going to mask it off automatically so back face mask the back facing normals it's the way to go about it okay and now that we have the actual knee in place this is close enough for government work so i'm going to go ahead and mirror and weld that and we already have a little bit of a figure now Real quick, I'm going to go into the body real fast, and I'm going to reshape this. I want a little bit of an S-curve, so I'm actually going to lift this up just a little bit. Say something like that. I'm going to kind of give him a little bit of an arch and get some shape language here. This is what I'm looking for right now. I'm going to grab the select lasso. If I start here, I want this kind of language. It's an S curve, and that's the language that I would like to see. So you can see that we have a little bit of that happening. It's not exaggerated a lot, but it's enough to let me know that I'm in the right direction. So I will gladly take this. Now he's he's Deadpool, so of course he's a little bit fit, right? So we're not going to, we don't want to make him too skinny, and we don't want to make him super chunky, but he is a chibi, so we can give him a little bit of a cute belly. Say something like that, you know, and we can give him a little bit of a arch like that. And let's go ahead and hit save. Now let's go to the how to make a mouth um, part real fast. So let's do this. So we got this guy up here. I'm going to go ahead and just hide this, this over here. And I'm actually going to close this up and let's just move our little chibi guy right over here. And now let's see, let's see, what can I use real fast? Do, 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 do. You know, I'm just gonna show you on a sphere. I don't wanna open up another project. Let me actually take this head. Let me actually take this head real quick. I'm just gonna duplicate it real fast. We'll solo this out. And let me just show you on here, for example. So let me weld this together so it's fully dynameshed. So geometry, dynamesh, and just boop. Ooh, that is low resolution, so let's kick that up. Low resolution, there we go. Say something like that, that's totally fine. Okay, and let me just sculpt in real quickly where an eye would be. Just so we can tell that it's some sort of head, right? Okay. Now, there's a couple ways you can approach doing a mouth inside of ZBrush. Okay, and this is actually, might be better, where now I'm going to go ahead and do this. So if you want to create a mouth in ZBrush, there's a couple ways that you can go about doing this. Dynamesh, here's the thing about Dynamesh, is that the the point in which if I have this point out here, it's designed to weld and it's designed to make something watertight, meaning it's going to delete all the internal mesh and close any holes. So if I am having two surfaces that are very close together, like this, for example, very close together, at some point in time, the resolution is going to try to weld this together. And this is going to fight you the entire time, right? And the closer this gets, the more that bounds. And then you're stuck trying to rip this apart. So what I actually recommend, if you're gonna do it with Dynamesh, is that you start the mouth cavity with an open mouth. 
and then you Z remesh it and get to some mesh that you're not working with DynaMesh. So for example, here, if I wanted to do a mouth, let me take the clay build up and I'm gonna go ahead and just start like kind of popping a hole in here. And I'm gonna just really open this up. Say something like this. Okay, I'm working a little fast, so make sure to take your time. So let's get something like that. Okay, so now I have a mouth here. Now something to note is that in animation and in games, you have what's called a mouth bag. And that is where you actually pop a hole down the throat a little bit and the mesh ultimately comes to an end, but it's deep enough that you can't see it and it looks like the, the actual character has a hole where they can eat food and swallow, right? Well, that's really hard to do with DynaMesh. So the way I prefer to do that is actually with Z Modeler. So first you would get something like this, and then you would want to Z remesh this. So in this case, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you my my kind of go-to method, is that I start with a relatively high, so 10, 15, maybe 20 polygons because this is based in thousands. And if we look up here at the top, I actually have 35,000 active points. That's pretty low for what we're going for. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna kick this up just a little bit so that the resolution change isn't drastic. I'm gonna say keep groups, but I'm gonna smooth groups down to zero. Now it's not to keep these groups here. It's actually to prevent what appears to be too much smoothing or shrinkage. When you get really low vertices, you're gonna get a little bit of smoothing happening to the normal, and that's gonna appear as if your mesh is shrinking, and you don't want that. So you're gonna go ahead and just hit smooth, uh, you're gonna hit keep groups with smooth groups down to zero. It's gonna prevent that from smoothing too much. And then I like to take adaptive turned on, but adaptive size really far down, like zero, one, maybe five max. This is going to allow the quads when you hit zero mesh to actually stay even instead of adapting to the mesh. So basically here, as it starts coming up, you might get a big quad, big quad, and then as it hits smaller details, it's gonna go small quad, small quad, small quad. I want even topology because I wanna use it for zero meshing. So I'm gonna say, okay, let's go ahead and do that. And then if you have a lot of detail, it's okay to go ahead and come up here at the top and actually hold control and stamp a little history marker to preserve that detail. But if you're actually making the mesh uh, to be nice and clean and you don't have a lot of detail, then you're just trying to get main shapes, then this part's not necessary. Just depends on what you're trying to achieve. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit zero mesher. And then I'm gonna take a sip of water, then coffee. There we go. So we actually have a pretty good mesh here. This is actually easy enough to work on, but we got a couple errors up here. So we're gonna go half and we're gonna try that again. And that's not too bad. That's starting to look pretty good. Okay, so we could try one more time, see how low we can go. There we go, that's looking pretty good. And we actually have some nice, um, some, some nice ring happening here. Now notice this is stretching up here just a little bit. So instead, we can actually pull up a zebra mesher guide, and we can say, you know what, we really want the edge flow to happen like this. So let's actually do it on this side here. I like this. So then we're gonna hit same, and we're gonna see if we can correct that a little bit. All right, that's good enough for what we want. Now that you have a zebra meshed uh, face, this is where, of course, you can actually start making the mouth bag really simple. And I feel like I have to sneeze, so one second. <laughs> okay. It went away. <laughs> That's like the worst, like just these. Okay, so now that I have this, now I wanna make this mouth bag. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna, with the Z modeler, I'm gonna press Alt and I'm gonna tap some areas in which I want this to actually be the hole for the throat. All right, so I'm gonna grab all that. And now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to extrude this back, but I'm gonna use Q mesh with polygroup all, and I'm gonna go ahead and start dragging this back. I'm gonna do this a few times, to say something like that. I'm gonna pop that in there. Now, here's the real cool trick about this, okay? Is that I'm actually going to, with polygroups, because we now have polygroups in there, I'm gonna press shift and control, and I'm gonna grab these two polygroups, and the way you do that is if you wanna grab two polygroups with the same click, you just click the vertice between the two polygroups. So that's, so it's really good in there. So that's shift and control and tap boop right there. And that actually keeps that. And now what we can do 
okay, is we can actually come in here and I do this, I go to um, display properties and I say double so I can see what's going on. And now I'm gonna take the move brush. I'm gonna start pulling this back and down. Okay, now I can absolutely, let's make sure we have symmetry turned on, we do. So I'm gonna pull this back and down. Say something like this. Okay, now I can of course come in here, mask this side and then just do a little bit of a smooth relax. Kind of get this in there like such. And that's gonna go something like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Z remesh this. And I'm gonna go ahead and say, let's keep the same because we added some topology. Now we do have a little bit of peeking through there. We can just smooth that. I'm gonna say, go ahead and keep the same. I'm gonna Z remesh that. And now that's gonna create this. So now what's gonna happen is I'm gonna go ahead and just hit render. And you can see here that now that kind of makes that dark. Now, this might be a little bit not big enough or this might be too big, so you can always adjust. But in this case here, this is actually going to be pretty much what I'm looking for. I can smooth that down at the top because I want this to kind of come down like this. There we go. And then of course too, I can even widen this out so I can pull these over, say like this. And if the move brush doesn't work for you, what you can do is actually grab the inflate brush. So that's B for brush, I and N. And then I'm gonna inflate, but see if I start inflating because the normals are reversed, it's actually going in. So I'm gonna press Alt and inflate it this way. And that's gonna help inflate that side. There we go. And then I'm actually gonna give it some topology. So I'm gonna go ahead and double this, Z remesh that, give it a little bit more topology. And now I can actually open the mouth on the inside just a bit more. And now I have this mouth bag. I can actually now start shaping the mouth a little bit. So I can come in here and I can start coming in, pulling this in and closing this up a bit. Now, one thing to remember here is that at some point the move brush is trying to protect both sides of the mesh. It doesn't want this to be really, um, doesn't want me to really come in here and actually, you know, uh, close this. But if you want the mouth to be closed, just grab the move topological and then come up to brush, come up to auto masking and adjust the range. I think if I drop it lower, I can actually work both sides and start closing that. I can also come in here and give it a little bit of an inflate and I can start closing that. And I can do that on the layer, right? And with that move topological, let's go BMT, you are able to come back in and reopen it with some finessing. Of course, this takes a little bit of time. Now, the only time I would close the mouth is if I needed it closed. A lot of times this would actually get me into blend shapes, which is now, of course, having the mouth relatively open using the layer system to then animate the mouth, which, because I just mentioned it, I'll show you real quick. Let's back this up enough, say something like that. If I wanted to animate this mouth inside a Z brush or get an idea of the animation in the mouth, I'd come in here and actually turn on a layer, take that move brush, start coming in and working it. This takes time, by the way, try not to rush this process. Come in here, use the inflate a little bit, Right, kind of close this, boom, say something like that. So now the mouth is closed, I'll turn off record, and now with the layer system, I can actually open it. I can really open it, ah, yay, freedom. <laughs> so you can give a little bit of an animation. So then if you go back to zero, this is where you left off, fully closed, fully open, and you just entered the world of blend shapes, and you can combine these different layers, so forth and so forth. So then you could come through here I'm gonna type zero in that, and then you can rename this and call this uh, open, you can call this open close. And now you have an open close layer. So there's a lot of fun ways that you can go through and do all this up. So, perfect. What's up, Angry? How you doing? Prashan, welcome in, hello. Very cool, very cool. Thank you for your guidance. Uh, Hope they will help uh, help a lot in my digital sculpting journey. Absolutely, you're doing great. Hey Ian, do you know? Do you play the layer in the timeline? You can. I'm pretty sure that you can. It's been a while, 
Um, but if I come up here to my timeline and I come up to timeline tracks, boom, layers. Yeah, so you would just turn this on. So then you would turn that on there. And then let's actually go to timeline and let's show it. So you have this here and then timeline tracks and then layers. So then here I'd make a marker and then somewhere right about here, I'd want to actually close that. Oh, is that the layer? Ah, that's the layer one. Okay, so not layers, but layer. Let's tap that one and let's come over here a little bit more and then close that one and then do that timeline. And then there you go. So in the, yeah, so boom, right there. So not layers because that's actually, I think that's referring to this up here, but the layer in the timeline. And now you can play that. So now you can create a talking character and then you can record that. Okay, well, when you're ready to record that, and then you can adjust the camera. So you can say, boom, zoom in, and then we get all the way in here. And then as I'm zooming in, the mouth is opening. <laughs> so yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you're so welcome. What's up, Sheriff, how you doing? Awesome, awesome. So yeah, absolutely. So that's how you would go about doing that. And of course, I'm just gonna go ahead and just remove these guys here. So I'm just gonna remove that. I don't need those timelines. All right, great. So hopefully that answered your question. That, that's how I would approach making a mouth bag in ZBrush and animating it <laughs> for your movie. Okay, great. Let's go back to creating the rest of the block out for this guy. And if you guys didn't know as well, um, you guys, uh, I've been working on a new DPP series called uh, uh, ZBrush and 3D Print Workflows. And so uh, l this last Monday, I did a whole thing where we actually did key cutting. Um, and long story short, um, we've showed how to make a key, how to measure, how to scale, all that good stuff. So if you guys have a little bit more interest in 3D printing, I know a lot of you have asked for it. And I want to make sure that you guys are aware that that's happening. And it's already started on week one. So let me go ahead and just uh, share the link real quick to that if you missed it. A lot of good info on that. Um, and then you guys can, of course, um, uh, see me next Monday for week two, where we actually, dis what we take is we take the key that we cut and we actually apply that to a model. So, so that is gonna be right here. It's available on all channels. You can find it on this channel as well. But of course, I want to show it to where it's going to live full time, which is actually, let's go live. And it was this one. And let me just copy this real quick. Bada bing, bada boom. So let me put that in there. Am I the key master? I'm the gatekeeper. <laughs> Can you export the animation open in cinema? Crazy Alexander, I don't think you can do that here. I'm not sure actually, I've not attempted that. I don't think so, but you can make animations in cinema. So, and there's like a whole series on that as well. I'm not sure if that works that way. I'd have to try it and get back to you is what I'm saying. That would be more for definitely like, um, that would definitely be more for, um, uh, blah, 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 blah. like just the, the recording itself. However, in the layer system, if you come here to layers down at the bottom, we do have an import and record deformation animation. So you, you might be able to take the layers. I'll have to play with that in Cinema 4D specifically, because I'm not sure. I don't know Cinema 4D enough to answer that question, but I do know that we do support the import and export of these MDD file types. So you would, you might be able to use the blend shapes in Cinema 4D. I'd have to play with that and get back to you on it, but um, I know that works well with Maya, so I'll have to see. <laughs> right, Leonard? Yep, you can export blend shapes to Maya. Yep, I'd have to test it, like I said, in Cinema 4D though, but great question. Okay, so we built this leg and we got two of them. And now we're gonna turn around and get some arms. And a lot of you might be thinking, so he's gonna do the same thing he did for the legs? Nope, absolutely not. I'm gonna control shift D. I'm gonna duplicate these legs. 
I'm going to move them up above here, and I'm going to call these arms so we all can go home a little faster. <laughs> and now I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to turn on uh, symmetry, of course. And we're going to rotate these things around. And I'm going to kind of come in here, rotate these, just say something like this. Uh, these guides are in my way right now, and that's okay. So I'm going to come through here, and now I'm going to remove this guy specifically. And I'm going to go ahead and do delete hidden. So let's go to geometry, modify topology, and delete hidden. And really what we're looking for now is just the ability to apply this to and make them arms. And so obviously we need to change the mesh a little bit. So I'm going to grab this guy. We're going to smooth this down just a little bit. Make these a little bit more arm friendly. We're just going to repurpose what we already have because the proportions themselves are actually right where we need them to be. So let's go ahead and just not reinvent the wheel on this. But we will need to, of course, make these a little bit more arm-like. So let's go ahead and grab move. You guys are coming in with some fantastic questions, by the way. So thank you all for being here. I really appreciate that. And then I'm going to go ahead and just rotate this around just a little bit. Give it a little bit of a bend. Say something like that. And now let's go ahead and focus on getting this shaped up. Okay, if you guys ever run into this, so I'm using the I'm using the select lasso, and this happens a lot, and that's because of the select lasso. If you select the edge, it's going to clear that whole edge. So a lot of times when I'm zoomed out here, I might click that, or I might end up accidentally clicking the edge part. So a little trick for you is just select the part that you want in Control Shift A, and that will pretty much solve that problem for you. Or what you'll do is you can actually just come up here, grab the select rec, because it uses a different stroke type. If you look at the select lasso, it's using the lasso stroke type. So you could change that, but I figure just come up here and just pick the select rec, and that will do. That will also kind of solve that problem. So just a little, little tidbit on that. Let's go ahead and roll the, rotate this down a little bit. Cool. Now he's not super beefy, so we don't really need to focus too much on whether or not the arms themselves are are very massive, but we do want to put them in a good place. And of course, too, I think we're going to need a neck on this guy. So let's come up here. Let's grab this tool. So Alt-Tap here. And let's go ahead and go B-I-T. I'm sorry, B-I-T. I must have hit something else, like Y. And I'm going to go ahead and grab a cylinder. I'm going to insert the cylinder. I'm going to bring this forward and scale this up a little bit. And give me a proper neck here. Now the neck here is just more of a guideline for me. So I know that the placement is pretty good, but he has absolutely no collarbone, no sh no shoulders whatsoever, right? So we need to kind of like flare this out a little bit more and give him a little bit more of like some anatomy, right? Let's come in and let's do that. I'm also going to clear that guy. Let's actually pull this up over here. There we go. And I'm going to just make sure that's a different poly group. I like to make sure my poly groups are drastically different from each other. Okay. There we go. Let's click, let's click this one. And then I'm just going to do a little bit of a rotate here. So I'm going to rotate this around just a bit. Maybe pull that down. Just so that the knee, I'm sorry, the elbow <laughs> is actually facing in the correct way. Or more correct than it typically is. All right, here we got a question. Is it true that with the gizmo, if you scale it from the center uh, with sustained control, it makes it inflate? Ooh, that's a great question, L. Renderman, great question. And you are correct with that. So if you go to the gizmo, in 2024, it doesn't matter if you are in classic transpose or regular transpose. If you're not in 2024, you're in prior versions, it's just the transpose. Um, and there is a difference between the two, it's very subtle, and I'll show those in a minute if you'd like. 
But with either of those, all you do is if you hover over the center part of the gizmo, you'll notice that down at the bottom, it would actually give you a warning. It's a little hard to see that, but it says control to inflate right there. In fact, let's do just get it on a, a darker screen, control to inflate. So yes, so all you need to do is just hover over that, press control, and that is going to inflate that or deflate if you go the other way. If you scale down, it will deflate it. If you scroll, scroll up, it will inflate it. So, and actually we can give them just a little bit chunkier arms. Absolutely, one of my favorite tricks to do. Super excited about that one. What's up, Nightbot? Hello. <laughs> yep, hold down control and make it happen. Oh, that's a fantastic question. All right. So now we have most of this. Let's go ahead and give him some hands. Now for hands, hands are always fun. I always treat hands very much like I would treat um, any character. You know, right now we have the bulk of this. And if we take a look at our scale here, I think the body's a little tall overall. So let's do this. Let's actually grab all of this except for that and this one. I don't want this one. I want these. I want these guys right here. I'm actually going to just scale that down just a little bit. That was a lot. Let's put this in the center. Just bring that down just a teeny, teeny bit. There we go. And let's take a look at this head real fast. And this head, I'm actually going to rotate this up just a little bit. And let's set that, say... I don't want to scale that down too much. Maybe I want to pull that down just a little bit, though. Okay. I think that actually might work out. Maybe pull this back to be a little bit more in the center. We obviously need to reshape the profile. The profile is a little, the profile is a little much. So let's actually reshape this. So again, we get a little bit of a draft back. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the, uh, let's go move, um, move infinite and start pulling this back a little bit okay and i'm gonna want to make this all one mesh here in a minute so he doesn't have any ears because it's all tucked under the mask we're not making an actual face today but i do want to actually like make this sculptable here so we're gonna go ahead and start blending that in but first let me go ahead and just kind of Sculpt out where the eye holes should be. And then we'll get to the hands. This will help me identify like the forehead area, stuff like that. Do a little bit of a reshape. So just rough sculpting, rough, rough, you know, rough spots here real quick. Kind of get that in there. There we go. And let's actually blend all this together. So I'm gonna go geometry, dynamesh. We knew that the resolution was a little small. Now the resolution's a little small. This is something I wanna call out here. The resolution here, if we come back, turn the wireframe on and go resolution 136. So let's turn that on. Look how, look how small that is. And there's a reason for that. And the reason why that's so low is because if we go over here to geometry size, Look at the size of my scene. It's 0.355. Honestly, the ideal scene for me to be working in is between one and two, and this is quite small. So what I can do is I can actually grab everything. So let's go to sub tool and let's turn on our guides and let's literally grab everything. And when I scale this up, watch what happens. So I'm gonna go to geometry, look at the size, I'm gonna scale this up. Boop, 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 boop. So let's go up and let's take it at about a one. So now my model's a lot bigger. And now when I go back to Dynamesh and it's at 64, when I Dynamesh this, so I turn Dynamesh on, right now I should scale this up just a little bit. And there we go. I don't have to go as much. What did I say, 184? So now it's not as aggressive at that point. 
So the whole scene itself. Now I said the ideal that I like to work in is about two. So I can actually go up a little bit more. So now it's at 184. Let's make this at about a two. I'm gonna redynamesh that. And it's at 81,000 active points. But look how much dense that is. So before it was at 22 at 184. Now I scaled it up, it's at 81,000 at 184. So this is how Dynamesh and your scene scale work. So if you are working on something and it's really detailed and you swipe your Dynamesh and your resolution is getting maxed out and it's still too low, check your size. Your, your, your model itself is probably really small. Yeah, that's a cool feature, the, the, uh, the, the inflate one. Oh, not a problem, not a problem. Yeah, you use blend shapes to Maya from ZBrush all the time. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what the MDD file was for. Absolutely. Okay. Now we're going to start kind of now we're going to start kind of making this more of a dead pool head. So now I'm actually going to is this material good? Let me look at if I pick not startup if I pick basic. I guess that's an okay material. Yeah, okay. Okay, what I want to do is actually kind of just shape this a little bit here. So I'm going to take my H polish a little bit. And like I said, the heads itself drafts back a little bit. So I want to start by just coming in with H polish and just refining the, the actual shape of the head. Because he's in a mask, this works really well for me with stylized characters and stuff like that. Anytime you're doing anything stylized, I find that the the H polish really just kind of helps me identify the head planes that I'm looking at. So something like this on the side. I know he's a chibi character, so he has a more rounded head, but I want to actually just come through and take a look at everything. So, and then I'll use the move brush to make some subtle changes. All right, let's say something like that. Now it's Deadpool here, so let's make him look a little bit like Deadpool. So let's grab our little snake hook brush here. I'm gonna come here at the top. I'm gonna just go ahead and immediately just kind of pull out that little tail that he has. Redynamesh that immediately. And then with this snake hook, I'm actually, actually with a move brush, let's go move brush, let's go to brush, curve, and curve alpha because, or sorry, AccuCurve, because that allows things to come to a point. And I want that to be a little bit more of a point and more down this way. There we go. So again, that's brush, curve, AccuCurve. That makes things come to a point. So without it, if I do this, it's very round. But if I come here, AccuCurve, it's very sharp. This is also a really good way to make those nice, sharp, pointy things. <laughs> you know. The nice sharp pointy things, the very technical term. Uh, can you mask out the area of a model and have a different material? Absolutely. You could paint multiple materials on the same subtool. So for example, here, this is your basic material. So I'm going to go ahead and mask this off right there. You come up here to the very top and right up here you have your alpha channel, you have your MRGB for material and RGB color, you have color and then you have material. So if I click this guy, and then come down to material. You can even paint on it as well. So you can hit PBA for paintbrush. You can grab a gold material and then you can color fill that object. Then you can invert that mask and say, you know what, on this top, I want it to be really reflective. So of course here, let's do this. I said material, not color. So let's go fill. You have to make sure you pick the material. Good job, Ian. Refer that and then grab the gold material, say something like that, and then you want to fill that. Now you have two different materials. And you can even paint with this too. So once you have these materials on, and then again, you come up here, color fill object. Oh, I don't want to fill it like that. It should be already filled. Let me grab the, let me grab another material, say wax. And now I can literally paint with the material. 
And of course, this is really low resolution, so you're actually seeing the different polygroups. But here, yeah, you could paint those different materials. And then, of course, if you really like absolutely 100%, you know, when you DynaMesh, it's going to replace all that. But if you fill the material and you want to get rid of it, then all you need to do is go ahead and just click and drag on the material and throw that here in the actual picker, and the which is just the viewport. Just pick in the viewport come up to color and fill object because that's a flat color. And then what that does is that it'll reset your material on that. So now if I go back and I can see what the different materials would look like, it's no, it's no longer set in stone, which is great. Or a really cool part, if we back up here, you do a project and then you open it back up and you're like, I forgot what material that was. Likewise, just come over here, grab, uh, click and hold on the material and then hover over and it will select the material that it recognizes. So if I wasn't sure what gold material I used, there it is, and it highlights it for me, which is up here in the matte cap. So again, to reset, just click and go into the viewport, not over material, and that will give you the flat color. You just fill it with the flat color, it resets it, or you hover over. Ooh, looks like I had a spike. Am I still live? Okay, am I still here? It looked like a... My, my internet just literally spiked right now. <laughs> All right, cool. Yes, back. Okay, great. Did that answer your question or did I cut out somewhere? Sharp pointy things. I think that's something that Tipple was saying. <laughs> yep. Okay, great. It was a small hiccup. Okay, great. Okay. Yay. All right, perfect. Well, I was answering a material question. Did that come through okay as well? Boom, 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 boom. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Sweet. All right. So let's continue through here. And again, I'm just kind of just going to be reshaping this just a little bit to my liking. Just get that nice little, that little look and feel. Now I'm going to pick a softer alpha. So I'm going to pick alpha 18 and I'm just going to go ahead here and just reshape this head to something that I like. Okay. Now I'm gonna fill this back in a little bit because we're gonna be drawing the mask shape of Deadpool here. I just wanted a place to know where his eyes would be. Let's pull this in just a little bit more. Awesome, okay. Now we have a general idea of what that's gonna look like. Now, what I'm gonna do is now that I have the main shape relatively where I want it to be, let's go ahead and grab this move brush. Again, I like to take my time. I don't like to rush any type of job unless I'm actually on a job that's like, yo, we need to get this out fast, right? But for something like this, we just get to take our time here, get the main basic shapes in. There we go. And then what I like to do before I commit to any changes here, I'm gonna take the paintbrush, okay? And I'm just gonna go ahead and fill this with a white color. And then I'm gonna switch my swatch and go to black. And what I wanna do is I actually want to go to stroke, lazy mouse, turn that up a little bit. Not with, not with the material itself, but I want to now kind of come in with a color. And I want to kind of check how this is looking. So we get a little bit of a point here. And I want to see how this is going. And if I paint this in, this will give me a better example of how this is going to look. So I'll just fill this in real quick. All right. Now let's go ahead and hit save. It auto saved right now, so let's go ahead and do that. Do, do, do. Go a little bit lower with this, a little bit more. Okay. Kind of 
kind of see how this is overall looking. Let's switch back for a second. Okay, not too bad. We can still move around a little bit, refine this a bit, but this, this shape will actually work for us. What we can do real fast is I'm gonna take a big move brush, like a really big, let's take move infinite actually. And I'm going to pull this down a little bit. And I'll pull this up just a little bit. So pulling down the forehead area just a bit, not so much the top of the head and get just a little bit more of an honest look and feel. Okay, that gives me a nice temporary idea of what that's gonna be. That should be close enough for what we want. And then of course too, we can come through here and then we can just draw some lines towards the back. Boom and boom. Okay, I'm happy with that. That's good enough right now for what we need. Again, we don't have any real major details, but we just want the overall shape to refine it. So let's come back over here. Let's turn these guides off for a second. And now I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of any control tap I had. Let's come up here and let's Z remesh it. I don't need the color anymore. I just wanna get some decent mesh to work on. What's up, Patrick? Dude, what's happening, man? Everybody, Patrick4D, you guys gotta say what's up to Patrick. Patrick, dude, if you love food, Patrick4D is the man. Go check him out. He also is a live streamer. Super awesome. <laughs> the chef, according to Pablo Munez. Hey, not a lie there. Not a lie there. All right, let's go ahead and let's go to Z Remesher. And again, we have about 86,000 total active points. So that's actually, you know, that's relatively low, but we are going to go a little bit lower than that and keep it super loose and nice and stylized. And then we can start, we can go with the hands. And then from there, we can start welding things together and finalize that stuff. So let's come in here. And we don't really need to worry about polygroups so much, but we will still do the keep groups, smooth groups down to zero. I'm gonna kick this up to about 20 on the 20,000. So that's gonna be about a, th a fourth of the total topology that's up there, maybe a little bit more. Adaptive size down, let's make sure that we have uh, symmetry turned on. And let's go ahead and Z remesh this. And because we're going to be keeping this one, this one will be for animation. I'm saying it now. You guys can hold me to it. Definitely, definitely going to be going for a, uh, this thing's going to get animated at some point. Sooner rather than later. All right, and let's go ahead and go half. And let's drop this bad boy down. How low can we go? Okay, so we have a pretty low shape of just uh, 1,294 points. So that's pretty low. That's okay. That's what I actually wanted. We don't need RGB on that. Just gonna do a nice smooth relax. I'm just gonna focus on getting the profile looking pretty good. All right. And again, Chibis have nice big round heads, so I'm not gonna worry about actually giving him too much of a of a crazy skull. All right, let's go into the hands. What I'm gonna do first is hit D for dynamic and get everything kind of smooth on that. Also too, we need to give him just a little bit more of a bootay. I noticed that uh, he's a little bit lacking there. We can't have that. Cannot have that. Yep, yeah, he has to go just a little bit more. So we need to have just a little bit more here. So we'll, we'll, we'll tuck them in just a bit. There we go. Boom. Trying to bring that down. There we go. That's yeah, a little bit better. There we go. Let's grab this. There we go. And let's actually bring this in just a smidget. There we go. Perfect. All right. So we're getting a pretty good block out here. So let's go ahead and hit save. Hey, much love guys. Yep, absolutely dude. And I have to snap a cylinder to the center of another cylinder. Is that possible? Yes, that is absolutely possible. 
and I'll show you the easiest way to do it. It is actually just with an IMM brush. So easiest way to go about doing it is to actually, if you have another cylinder, so let me go ahead and just hit save on this one more time. Let's stick him over here. Before we get to the hands, shift S, stamp them. Let's actually come here. We have a cylinder and I wanna go ahead and uh, do, 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 make sure that's make poly mesh 3D. Okay, I got a cylinder. Now I need to snap another cylinder to it. The thing to do is um, when you have our IMM primitive, so B, I, and then, and then T, and I have my insert cylinder, to snap it to one cylinder to another, you can actually just work off that vertice, and that is truly snapped to that size. Now, there is an older plugin that you can download. It is IMM draw size. So, for example, if I needed to set the size, right? So here, actually, let me scale this, say, something like that. When I drag this up and then I press control, that's actually going to give me the same exact size that I that my draw size is. So if I hover over this again just a little bit, just make sure that I match the draw size here. So as I drag, as I start dragging, press control, and that's going to snap to your brush size, and that is completely snapped to it. So that's that is absolutely a way you can go about doing that. Now there is a new feature called uh, that an update called Contact. Um, and let me see if I remember how to use that. It's We just came out with it, and it's been just a couple minutes since I played with it. Um, the other thing, too, real fast, is that there is a line. There is a lining ability. So if you have two, um, if you have one subtool, so let's say you have this one over here, and I need to snap one to the other in a different size, or I need to line them up exactly. I can do that line up process by coming down to a line and just snapping these and that this will align one to another, whichever one I have selected. So that's one way of doing it. The contact one, let me see if I remember it. <laughs> if not, I know we have a video on it and I can just point you to the video. So this one is new in 2024. So here, if I remember right, and I think it's with a transpose. Let me just play with it for just a second. So if I want to Go from here to here, see and apply. Yes, okay, great. Okay, so if I have this cylinder here, so I'm gonna hit Y again. I'm just gonna snap that right there, say boom. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of move this off over so I can see. So if I have this angled over here like this, then what I wanna do is I wanna be able to snap this to this guy, right? So I'll use the um, the transpose and I'll say, take this, ver this edge, this vertice, and I want you to snap this to this side right here. That's what I want you to do. Now, if I hit C1 and then apply, it's going to literally snap that cylinder to the top of this other cylinder. And then you can just go ahead and readjust that and make that as much as you, you know, just even that out a little bit and be like, boom, done. So that's that's those are the few ways that you can go about doing that. I actually really like doing the primitive ones. If I'm drawing out a primitive shape, it just automatically works right there on any point that I touch. It's automatically snapping to that that actual front facing edge. So it's already there. If you see people draw this out and then press and hold shift, like I'm here and then I press and hold shift, that's actually following the gizmo and the way the gizmo is facing. So being able to just draw that out, it's automatically facing the vertice I'm on. So, and then of course, by pressing control, it snaps to your brush size. So those are a few ways that you can go ahead and align that stuff as quick as possible. What's up, Kaywin? Hey, how you doing? <clears throat> Will you ever do portfolio critiques or even shout outs? Um, you know, I haven't really considered it too much, but at the end of the day, um, I actually have a Discord dedicated to helping people like that's just on my off time. I have a Discord dedicated to helping people that actually like, if you need a critique or if you're like not sure about something or you want feedback, there's a bunch of artists that literally are just there to, you know, it's a whole community um, that has just a bunch of, you know, really awesome people that help out with that. So, um, if you want, a, if you want like my personal feedback on it, then you can always, um, with this link, I'm going to drop in the chat right now. You can absolutely 
just send your stuff in there and be like, hey, can you give me a quick, you know, uh, can you give this a quick look? You know, based on my availability, I can go in there and give a shot. Um, but there's also a ton of really talented artists that are in there that would be more than happy to come in and help guide you as well. So it's very community driven. You know, they say it takes a village to raise the child. I think it takes a village to absolutely grow as an artist because being an artist means that we are constantly, you know, learning and expanding our knowledge. We're here every single day trying to do our best. And sometimes, you know, we just don't know what the next step is. And so if we get to lean on people that help out, then it's a lot easier to get through those challenges. It's something that helped me grow as an artist. When I used to live stream a lot, a lot of people were just definitely there for me and helped me and guide me. So I like to give back. So that community is dedicated to just anybody who wants to pop in and just, you know, help each other, grow with each other, give feedback, tips and stuff. It, it's really just a really cool, it basically runs itself and it's thanks to everybody who just shows up every single day. There's even a lounge in there where artists will come in from time to time. And if you ever see me in there, which is which is not as much as I used to be, but you know, work is crazy, family life and stuff. But when I'm in there, feel free to pop in and say hi. And then you can, again, you can always tag me and stuff. So we also have, um, and then we also have an official ZBrush Discord as well. So if you need more specific ZBrush help, we have um, that here. I'll drop the link. And that was definitely something that um, you can pop in there and get a little bit more ZBrush feedback. But um, yeah, it, any one of those will be super helpful for you. All right, catch a ride. All right. So now let's do this. So what I'm going to do before I merge, before I make the hands, I want to merge the body and get the body one piece, and then we're going to do the hands. So, and this basically turned into how to make a base mesh <laughs> with Ian Robinson. Um, so I'm going to come in here. I'm going to put things in a folder. So I'm going to call this body Boop, right there. And I'm going to throw the arms and the legs in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and just merge the folder. So it's now this whole giant piece right here. And there's a couple ways you can go about doing this. What's up, Carbon? Four, 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 four. How you doing? There's a couple ways to go about doing this. And one of the ways to go about doing this is to just subdivide it up and dynamesh it, uh, which I do quite often. But um, a method that also works just as well and is actually now a very popular way of doing it is actually remesh by union. And so if you have remesh by union, everything's going to get stitched together pretty well. And so we're going to go with this method just for today to just kind of show you a different way of doing it. And I'm going to go with smooth and I'm actually going to turn on Sculptress Pro. And now we got to first find out what that actual, like if I start smoothing this out, you can see here it's going to start actually evening that topology, which is great. So I'm going to turn on symmetry. I'm going to hold uh, shift and just kind of smooth these areas down. And this will help finish welding these points together. Say something like that. And the reason why we want to do this when you're using this method is because we might have generated some holes and it's quite possible that those holes are not any friend of mine. So and that's just going to cause complexity in the mesh and you don't want that. So we're going to go ahead and just go with this approach. Anywhere that there was a stitch, just come in there and get that all nice, did done cleaned up. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. Yeah, it's close enough for what we need. Okay, great. Now, before we hit Z remesh, here's something to remind you is that we just use Sculptress and we just quote welded all these things, right? But you could have a hole somewhere. You could have floating topology there. So if you do, then what you wanna do is actually real quick, come up to geometry, modify topology. You wanna close your holes. You wanna weld your points. And then from there, you do wanna do a mesh integrity and make sure that that is fine. And that should generate zero problems, but you never know, we're sculpting, things happen. So, and now from here, we're gonna do the same thing, keep groups. Now I'm gonna simplify a few things. I'm gonna go ahead and actually make it all one mesh, okay? And then I'm gonna come in here and we're going to use the mass lasso and I'm going to make 
my own polygroups this time. And the reason for that is I want to make sure that I have nice, clean loops where we have these intersections. So I'm going to say something like this, something like this, sharpen that, do that. Now these two colors are very similar, so I back up and control W a lot until I find something a little bit more contrasty, like that purple. And then here I'm going to go ahead and just somewhere around there, sharpen that, and again. And I don't like the same colors. I don't like the same colors, guys. I'm sorry. So let's do... Burp, burp, burp. Burp, burp. Can you give me like a... There you go. Yellow is fine. Yellow is fine. Okay. So now we have this, but notice too that we're going to have these kind of jagged edges here. You'll notice I do a lot of prep, like a, a lot of prepping before I make an action. And this has actually saved me a lot of heartache. So here, these areas right in this area, these are all like... You know, they're they're wibbly wobbly warbly dorbly. They're just not good. So let's come over here to deformation. Let's go to polish by groups, and let's actually clean that up a bit. There you go. Perfect. Now our mesh does not look super pretty at the moment, but that's okay because now we're gonna make sure that we go to well first we save, oh we save, and then go to zero mesher. Again, same thing, but we're gonna go a little bit higher here. Let's go with ten. And then let's do the same thing. Let's see what we get. Hell yeah, keep the 44444 live. You know it, buddy. You know it. Hey, did you finish Crane? I did finish the sculpt of Crane, but I had not finished moving him into Substance Painter. And I want to do a little bit more uh, work on that on the side and then show that guys to you. But I also was like super feeling my Deadpool today. So I had to, go, <laughs> had to do the DP. <laughs> There we go, okay. All right, so now we have some pretty clean topology. This is looking quite nice. How low can we go? There we go. Look at that. That's a lot better. That's giving us a lot more shapes, and this will be very manageable to sculpt on this. There we go. In fact, here real quick too, let me see if I have the crane file here so I can show you where we finished on that. Uh, let's see, is this it? Nope, that's not it there. Here, let me see something real fast. I gotta look for him. I saved him on my Dropbox here. Let me see if I can find it so I can show you where that's at. I gotta do some exploring now. We got to print him though, and actually we're going to be doing a print of him. Um, boom, 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 boom. Huh? Oh, you know what? I think I have him saved on my other computer. So here, I'll show you real quick. So check this out. I actually showcase him on the stream that uh, we're going to continue working on him a little bit because we're going to be prepping him for 3D print uh, next week. So here you can watch this. This was how I did the 3D print stuff. But let me see, do I show him here? I know I show him. Did I show him? Did I not show him? Okay, I will have to show him uh, next week. Oh man, I thought I showed him, I showed Leo. Well, that's a bummer. Did I not show him? I don't think I showed him. Okay, I have him on my other computer, but he's he is finished for what we want to do with him. That's a bummer. That's the problem with having too many computers. <laughs> that is definitely a first world problem on my side. Uh, let's see here. Um, working on Paul's face right now. I'm gonna go start going crazy. Nice, nice. Hey Hudson, how you doing? Uh, my day's going pretty well. Thanks for asking, man. How's your day going? Uh, did you? Uh, how do? Uh, sorry. How did you scale the body and the head to the same size? at both at the same time. Great question. So the infamous pizza box. So if you open up the gizmo and then right over here you have, it's officially called the transpose all selected subtools, AKA the pizza box. So if I click this thing, it gives me all this little box right here. 
And then what I'm able to do is I can actually control shift and tap the head and the body together. And this, if it's looking like this anti-aliasing old school 1995 television set happening here, that means it's not selected. So that's gonna scale just the one, right? But if I touch both, now it's gonna scale. So here I can actually scale both of them at the same time. And that's gonna save me. It's also control z -able. So if I do both at the same time, even though these two subtools are, on two, are obviously not welded, control z does the same action to all of it. Aw, oh, thanks, man. Demirch, Demirch Creations Animation Studio. Thank you so much. So yeah, that's how you go about and that's how you do that. Okay, now we absolutely 100% need to give him some arms. I mean, some hands. He doesn't have any hands and he's looking a little funky dunky. Um, real quick, I do this a lot. I always say, let's do this, but real quick um, here, I'm just gonna go ahead and just kind of give him a little bit of scapula love back here just a little bit of anatomy so we can you know, kind of like see this for what it is and boom just a little bit there we go there we go okay there we go and we can kind of smooth down that knee just a little bit and i like to keep these arms just bent just a tiny bit okay now let's get to the hands and i don't know about many of you but i will be fully transparent here and let you know that hands is one of the things that still gives me troubles today. But you have your best reference right here. There are there are definitely artists that have, you know, like growing up in the day, you can always tell the artist at the animation studio that just didn't really have a good grasp on a certain piece of anatomy because they would do a good job at hiding it. Like I've seen a lot of cartoons where you never see the feet and it's like, oh man, <laughs> they just never, they never drew feet. Hands scare me. That's one thing that it does. It's just that it's very complex anatomy and I keep trying it and some days I do really good and some days I'm like, this is the worst thing ever. But, you know, practice makes permanent and even if it's something, you're always going to have something that I think is going to give you a little bit of like difficulty in the future. So at the end of the day, you know, um, if something is terrifying you, that's the thing you should be working on. So that's for me. I'm always working on hands, trying to prove it. So we're gonna work on just sculpting a single hand and then we're going to move uh, all that stuff around. So what we're gonna do first is let's hide this thing. Let's move him over here. Nice little base mesh, really, really simple. And this will be good overall to get um, other characters finished in the future. But let's go ahead and hit solo and let's do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze this on down and we're just gonna work. Now he's gonna have a thumb and three fingers. And that's something that if we look at this reference, we're definitely gonna wanna follow that. A thumb and three fingers. So we're gonna be focusing on that aspect as well. So right now I'm gonna hit symmetry and we're gonna kinda give me a bit of a palm shape. I agree, hands are a pain point. Also feet, yeah, absolutely. Yes, the goal is this DP, this DP chibi uh, thing. Yeah, absolutely. This is my reference. <laughs> oh, so you can choose a skip feed? I thought it was mandatory. <laughs> I guess it depends on what kind of thing you're going for. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, what's the difference between sculpting in, with perspective or without perspective? And which one do you recommend? Ooh, Renderman, that is a fantastic question. So sculpting with perspective. I come from the toy world um, and 3D printing. And so a lot of the times orthographic, which is what I'm in right now, is something that ultimately, um, you know, it works good enough for what I'm trying to achieve. Nine times out of 10, for my experience, the orthographic is a pretty true representation of what you're gonna get on the actual model. However, that being said, perspective has its benefits. And one of the benefits of working in perspective is to let something look more natural to the human eye. Now, the time I choose to use perspective is when I'm really working on human anatomy or a likeness. Those are the two times I really focus on utilizing perspective. I also turn on perspective with most of my renders. I don't usually sculpt in perspective, but with um, but in my renders, I will turn it on because it gives it a little bit more of a realistic feel to the actual, uh, to the render itself. So 
Um, for me, it's when you're doing any type of likeness and so forth, that's going to be really where uh, things shine the most. Um, but again, it, everybody's different. If you do work in perspective, um, one of the things I recommend is you go up to draw and you work around 85. So, and the reason for that is because if I go up to draw and say 28, and let's actually show it on the body and head. So let's turn solo off. Let's hide that guy. So in the body on the head right here, let's go ahead and clear. So this is without perspective. Right, so I'm gonna stamp that. And then this is with perspective. <clears throat> so you can see a major difference that happened. But now if I go to draw, that's at 28, that's 35, 50, 85. 85 feels a lot more natural and a lot more towards the orthographic side. And a lot of artists that I speak to that work in perspective primarily, they all agree that around 80, 85 millimeter. That's a, also, fun fact, if you're a photographer and you're taking headshots of people, 85 millimeter lens is actually a really great lens for head drop photography. <clears throat> Pardon me. So uh, using that knowledge in my background, that's also where I lean on the go to draw 85 millimeter. Now, the thing to remember when you are working in perspective is that when you get really, really, really close to this, at some point there is an auto crop that occurs. And this auto crop is designed to make it so that you're not truly warping your viewport. However, um, that's, that also sometimes will shut down perspective mode. If the, and if that's the case, you just gotta you know, zoom back out, turn off perspective, turn it on, and that should work. So if you're really, really zoomed in, that AC highlights. When you're all the way zoomed out, if we take a look at it right here, so this says auto crop right there. If I hit F on the keyboard, you'll see that that grayed out. So that means that we're back in actual perspective and that's the lens that we're working with. But for me, I, again, I like to just turn off perspective. It's not something I usually work in because most of the time, again, my stuff gets my stuff gets 3D printed and it's just not something I necessarily need. But that is just me. Everybody is absolutely different. Great question, by the way. Yes, absolutely, Papa Yu. This will be, uh, this is always uh, posted as a VOD, so you absolutely can follow along on this because we just, we're making a whole base mesh today. Hands are a butt, <laughs> which is also hard to get right. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So let me, I'm gonna go ahead and actually Z remesh this. I want this to be lower in topology. It's a little bit dense. I don't need that much. I'm gonna kind of smooth that down a little bit, get a little bit more rounded. So I'm going for like a kind of cute hand, of course, right? So we're gonna have something like this. And hands always have a little bit of an arch. If you are working with something that has four fingers, like if you look at your hand, straight on it's a little hard to see in my camera but you can see here that my hand is absolutely rounded it is not straight so you want a little bit of roundness to your hands it's something that i like to put in there so i say something like that and then what i'm going to do let's actually go to viewport two and we're just going to just have this guy here for a second now let's get some fingers in and I'm going to go ahead and just insert uh, do, 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 a cylinder. I'm going to bring this straight up. I'm going to scale this down. Say something like this. Now what I'm going to do real fast is give myself a little bit of topology here. So I'm going to go with the Z modeler, hover over this edge. We're going to go insert multiple edges with key poly groups. So that's allowing me to, if you hover over an edge, press the space bar. Obviously gives you that menu if you're working with Z modeler. And so I want to have those options. I might come in here and just give myself a little bit of topology, just like that. Okay. And the reason why I want to do that is because now I'm going to smooth it out and I don't want super rounded. I want just like nice and controlled. There we go. And now here, I'm going to take the move infinite one more time. And we're gonna make a simple finger. Okay, so I have this guy. I'm gonna go ahead and control, press and hold control and drag to duplicate that out. Make sure I get a different poly group because I'm gonna wanna change that. 
I'm actually going to taper this a little bit. So we're going to push this in just a bit. There we go. And I'm going to have this finger come up a little bit. There we go. Kind of create that little bit of a point. There we go. There we go. Boom. Finger. Now, the thing what we want with the finger is if we drag this, I'm going to drag this over and down. We want roughly, if you measure your middle finger to your palm, it's about the same size. That's your measurement point. So on real anatomy, your middle finger is the same length from tip to the main joint on the inside. Measure that, so you got about like that. So it's about the same size. Also to your whole hand, from tip of your finger to the base of your palm, is the size of your face. So those are measurement points you can actually check, right? So for, but for stylized, we get to bend those rules a little bit. But I still want to make sure that I'm at least following some proportional guidelines. These are nice little stubby ones, but I'm going to make a hand that's a little bit more towards, you know, that actual, that measurement. So I'm going to inflate this too. And I'm going to put that right in there. And we're going to kind of angle this up here. Boom. I'm going to control drag. I move this more this way. Lift this up a little bit. Might lengthen this one just a little bit. I'm gonna grab this guy, move this down. Maybe scale this one down just a little bit. I'm still gonna inflate it though, but I'm gonna kind of scale it down just a bit. Give me a little bit of variation so I know which way the hand is actually going. And then I'm gonna go here for fun. I'm gonna go to polygroup, auto groups, because I wanna make sure that all of these are just a little bit different. So I can always go back and adjust You haven't used ZBrush in a while because I'm working in SD right now, but I'm going to be in a world of pain once I get back on it. Actually, I have something for you. I have something for you, which will be super great as a, as a reminder of getting back into ZBrush. We have this getting started series, 100% free. You're going to want to just have this in your back pocket because, yeah, I understand that some jobs, absolutely, like what you're working on, you know, you don't, you're not always in ZBrush all the time. So, yeah, going back and forth and if things changed. So here is a getting started series for you done by Anna Carolina. Um, it's 27 videos, but they're very short. And you can kind of go through and just, you know, showcase like here. You can actually see all the different chapters and they're just a few minutes long. So you can re-familiarize yourself with a lot of this. It's gonna do that. So let me throw that in the chat for you and just kind of have that in your back pocket. Okay, perfect. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna repurpose one of these. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm going to just, I'm just gonna control shift D, duplicate that. I like to separate the thumb from the other fingers because I tend to find that the thumb itself, I end up spending a little bit more time getting that right. So I'm gonna grab these, this one and, nope, not that one, and that one, because that's the stubbiest one of them all. And I'm gonna go here to geometry, modify topology and delete hidden. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and before I actually place this finger over there, what I will do is I'm gonna grab that primitive brush again. So I'm gonna go B for brush, I and then T. And then I'm just gonna come over here and grab the polysphere. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab and actually add in that kind of butt shape area that we were referring to. So that was actually mentioned earlier. So I'm going to kind of come in here, just kind of place this little spot right here. Just kind of move this around. Give me a spot in which that is residing because that's going to give me a little bit more of a hand shape. So again, we're just using that block out method for a lot of this. Okay. And I'm actually going to duplicate this one on over here and get a different color on it. And we're going to get this side of it. So let's push this in. Just 
Just getting some nice shape. Not going too crazy with it. Let's get that in there. Got a little bit of uh, fatty tissue and, and a soft spot on the hand here on the backside. It's nice and soft. And when you firm, when you make a fist, that actually makes it nice and solid. If you take martial arts before, and or boxing or whatnot, you know that's a good like hammer fist. That's a good, <laughs> that's a good one. Right, so it's nice and tight. So this area right here has a little bit of flex to it. So I like to put in this other material. Do something like that. Okay, great. And then here, we're gonna have like a little bit of a triangle shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear this up. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this out. Grab this in here like such. And now I'm gonna go ahead and kind of give me a spot for my thumb to reside in. Again, just make that a different poly group. I'll rotate that just a little bit. Yeah, this is some. This is a place where I usually end up taking a lot more time. And just get this right. Maybe something like that. Okay. Now I can grab this guy. This guy. Nope. There we go. Oh no, I'll go back here. So pick this one. I want the thumb. There we go. Just had to hide the other fingers. So let's go here. Let's grab that. Let's move this on over. There we can put these fingers back on. Now we can come through. Now the cool part about the finger or the thumb rather is that they can actually, your pinky and your thumb can touch. And I tend to try to remember that because that is the, that's the point in which it's like, your thumb, when it's relaxed, is kind of on the side facing. You know, it's very interesting the way the hand itself runs. So I try to come through. And also I have some Megan Fox thumbs. I don't know if you guys can see that. I have stubby thumbs. When I was first sculpting hands, my first thumbs looked like this because <laughs> that was my reference. Uh, so, um, you know, I didn't always see, uh, I always didn't always see, you know, the uh, the other side of stuff. So I didn't see what everybody else was rocking. I call it the Megan Fox thumbs. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to kind of just run this through and just get kind of a, a basic shape here. I'm just going to grab just like that. Control shift A, mask that off. Kind of just move this in a little bit. We'll refine this a little bit more when we get to a decent spot, but I'm gonna give the finger a little bend. That's the other thing too. I'm gonna give the fingers a little bit of a bend. I'm gonna come in here, so here and just grab these. Control shift A, come in here kind of move that in a little bit, say something like that. Move this down. Say something like that. Just give it just a little bit more of a relaxed feel. Nope. Grab that. There we go. that just a bit just a little bit of so let's actually touch right there bring it down bring that over I'm gonna point that up just a little bit okay all right so that will work fairly well now what I want to do real quick is I do want to go back here to this thumb real fast and then I'll check the chat. So I'm actually going to kind of give me a wider thumb base. It's not so narrow. So something like that. Move that in just a bit. Okay. I think this will be a pretty good starting spot. 
Was he just curious? Oh wait, what day a week? Uh, let's go back real fast. Uh, what day a week have you uh, have you stream? So I actually stream most Wednesdays. Today is usually the day that I stream. So from 10 to 1 is typically the stream length. Every Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, and then for this month, I'm actually live stream. I did a live stream on Monday for DPP, uh, which is our demystify post-production series where we talk about workflows tips and tricks with our software into other workflows and we're covering 3d printing which um if i i shared that link earlier but i could share it again here in a minute um and then those are at 9 a.m to 10 10 30 sometimes 11 a.m pacific standard time so sometimes it runs about one to two hours um, but typically you'll catch me here and then also too, I actually, for fun, I actually hang out with some friends. So like Mike Thompson, Bradley Cooper over at the Stylist League and I'll do streams every once in a while on their channel, really hang out and have fun with them, create new stuff. So you might see me there as well on the Stylist League. So a lot of fun stuff. And then here, let's see, just curious, how many years of practice did you take to master your craft in ZBrush? So I've been using ZBrush now for about 10 years. Um, and I would say, I really got comfortable. I'm a slow learner, so I really got comfortable in ZBrush right around year six when I really started getting into it. But I had to learn a lot about character design and concept and following a concept. And I was really late to the party, um, but ZBrush was something that a lot of a lot of artists I meet, they, you know, they're able to really just, you know, they really focus on the sculpting aspect. And so they really focus on you know, having like a really like good set of brushes, good set of features. And that's what's cool about ZBrush is that you're really able to, with ZBrush, you're really able to like, honestly, you know, do a lot with very little. Like you ever hear the 80-20 rule where it's like, you know, 20% of, 80% uh, of your work can be done by 20% of your tool, the tool you use, that type of thing. Well, think of it more as like in ZBrush, it's a little bit more like um, it's a little bit more like 90 10 sometimes 95 10. I know a lot of artists that do just a, a little bit and I respect that so much. For me the way my brain works, I actually got frustrated not understanding the program. So I devoted a lot of time to figure the program out and through Ask ZBrush the many times I've slowed down Michael Palpovich in my early years, and then eventually, you know, getting mentored by Shane Olson, a lot of it um, started clicking for me with repetition, time over, time over and over and over and over and over again. Um, I feel like this thumb is in the wrong spot, but we're not going to lose sleep too much on it. Anyway, so um, so for me, that was that was definitely a lot of it, which, you know, it just, I, I wanted to know and learn it. So I ended up really investing a lot of time and effort. Um, so it just depends. Everybody's a lot different and it's amazing to see, you know, what anyone can do with the program. Um, but at the end of the day, yeah, it just depends on you. But for me, it's been now, um, let's say, yeah, 10 years. And I'd say as a working professional, I started working as a professional in 2020 as a freelancer. So that's about, yeah. So now it's been about four years as a working professional. So think of it, the first six years I was learning. And that's about, that's about how it worked for me. So hopefully that that's helpful. Okay. So I've noticed right here, the thumb's feeling a little weird and that's because here, the way the shape is, is just not wrong. There's a little bit of a wedge here between the thumb and the index finger. And so there we go. Um, so I wanted to make sure I actually call that wedge out. That's the part that actually usually gets me the most is that spot right there. But that's actually starting to look a lot nicer. So I'm pretty happy with this block out. It looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and save. You are so welcome. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Cool. Uh, will the character be rigged or pose inside a ZBrush? So I'm actually going to be, I want to rig this character. I actually do want to set him up for animation and I want to learn uh, rigging. So I'm probably going to go into Cinema 4D and learn that. But I also, um, we've also worked closely with Character Creator and I want to try that method as well.
Yep, Carbon, 44444, absolutely. That is something I've been contemplating for sure. Actually already like, I helped beta test the that when, it, when they reached out to us here at Maxon and that was a lot of fun to be able to work to help with that and stuff. But it's it's now been two years. Like that was something that when I first came on, we were actually working with them very closely. So, oh God, so yeah, it's been like, I haven't really touched it, but Accurig is something that I really did like for an easy skeleton. So uh, helping with that process was really cool. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're going to, now I showed you guys how to, of course, like move everything right into like I showed you guys this method where we go ahead and we click this 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 and then we're able to kind of move stuff right well check this out another way that you can go about moving stuff or grouping stuff is actually when it is all fully selected like this hand here so now this hand is fully selected what you can do with this is hit control F and now that it has multiple subtools selected I can actually move this all into a folder. So I can say always yes and call this hand. And now my hand is here in a whole folder ready to go for me. So now that's perfect. So now what I can do is I can come through and merge that folder and have something like this. And now I made the left hand first. So we're gonna end up placing that. Now, he's a chibi character, and so that rule I just told you where the hand and the face, that's the same size, that's clearly not gonna happen here, right? So we're breaking uh, some anatomy rules in our stylized approach. So we're going with a little bit more of a, right, of a thing that fits his body, not his head. He's a chibi character, so rules are meant to be broken here. There we go. So we have something that's a lot like this. And let's actually rotate that forward and bring that in. And I like to add a little bit of like plane change. I like to, I like to kind of do something like that. It's just a preference. And now I get to shape the hand a little bit to the rest of the body, make that make sense. Right, I'm going to subdivide this one time and then I'm going to come up here and delete lower because it's just too low res. There we go. And I want to kind of tie this all in and then let's move that down and over. There we go. That's looking pretty good. There we go. And now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and mirror and weld that. And what you just noticed is I hit mirror and weld and it actually replicated the hand from screen right over to screen left. And how is that possible? Well, the trick with mirror and weld is that anything, when you hit mirror and weld, it's always gonna look at the screen left side first, and then it's gonna populate that over to screen right. However, even though it's looking from left to right, if there's absolutely nothing, if you turn on the floor here and you hit to get that center divide, if there's absolutely nothing over here on this side of screen left, then it automatically is going to assume that you only have this here and it will actually populate that over there. So hitting mirror and weld with nothing on screen left will populate and generate from rear right. So if you're still going down to here, if you're coming down to deformation and you're hitting mirror and then mirror and weld, you don't need to do that. If it's only on the, on the right side of the screen and nothing on the left, then you could just go ahead and hit mirror and weld and that will save you a step. And now for here, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to, I showed you guys the, um, the uh, method of going through and using the remesh by union. I'm just gonna go ahead here real quick and I'm going to just dynamesh this. Say something like that. Actually, you know what, I, I lied. You know what, I absolutely lied. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna, we're gonna go, we're gonna, we're gonna do we're gonna do this. Yeah, let's, I'm actually, and here's the reason why. So I wanna actually um, keep these poly groups a lot and I don't, I just really think that um, the better approach actually for this will be remesh by union. So I wanted to go ahead and do that. I think this is gonna give me a better result out the gate. So I'm gonna go ahead and accept that. So let me just do that, turn on smooth and let me go ahead and use 
the uh, Sculptors Pro. And I'm actually going to turn, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn off smooth. I'm going to turn RGB down to zero, right? Or what you can do is you can just have add on, but you can add it down to zero. And what that's going to do is it's going to help me not smooth my mesh, but it's just going to allow me to still use Sculptress without too much mesh change. Hopefully that made sense. So I'm not actually smoothing my mesh. I'm just giving it more topology now. How much time do we got? So we spent two hours making a base mesh, which is actually not too bad. Not too bad. Let's see, character creator is the bee's knees. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. Uh, that part of ZBrush taunts me the most is modeling. Actually, you know what? Definitely, if it scares you, dive in. Absolutely, I encourage that. <laughs> but I know what you mean, yeah. But the more you practice, practice makes permanent. That's that's my go-to for everything. And don't be afraid to fail. Like, for me, I'm always trying to explore new ways. And the amount of models that are sitting on my hard drive that are just total garbage, that I'm like, I don't like this. However, the more you go through it, the more times you actually ultimately end up, you know, not, um, you, you kind of end up failing, right? You make something, it doesn't work. You make something, it doesn't work. The more you do that, ultimately, the better for you because you start learning, you start learning better workflows. You start learning like, oh, I tried it this way, that didn't work, and it opens you up to exploration. And eventually, when you start getting the results that you like, then you understand how you got there, and those failures end up becoming your successes because those are the things that you're going to remember on what not to do. So I highly encourage that, you know, if it's if it's something that scares you, go ahead and give it a shot. You know, try it a few times and then too you can always take a look at a tutorial and and so forth. And of course too just ask questions. What is the level up you would like to have? Well, that's a great question. So honestly, I pretty much just sculpt everything that I see and like. Um, I'm very much somebody who works a lot off a of reference. A, a level up that I would like to have is the ability to concept my own ideas a little bit more clearly. Right now, I've focused on so working off of reference and concept a lot, and I understand a lot of the anatomy and stuff. So for me, it's more about like, I want to start exploring my own creativity, my own designs, and and fail a bunch at that until I start getting things that I like. Um, so it's just something that I, I have some personal growth that I would like to do. But ultimately, yeah, that's, that's kind of it. And then maybe one day to have a sideshow piece. That would be pretty cool. Personal goals. Okay, so now we're gonna come through here and just like we did with the body, I'm gonna make my own poly group on the fingers and that this is actually going to be something that I think is just allows me a little bit more uh, freedom to control the things that I would like to control. There we go. So get something like that. Sharpen that to get something there. That looks pretty good. Yeah, that's fine. That's a, that's a fine color. And then let's do the same thing. We're going to go to deformation and we're just going to polish our groups a little bit, get a nice straighter edge on that. Another way you can do that too is you come up here to the light box and hit brush. And you'd be surprised how many brushes you actually have up here. So not only do we have all of these brushes, but we also have like another 300 brushes up here. And the brush that I love the most in this circumstance is actually smooth groups. So if I hit brush, smooth, and then smooth groups, and say, yep, that's fine. I don't need the RGB part of it, but what I can do is zoom in all the way here and I can start smoothing out that area. Of course, I don't need sculptures for this part. I just wanna smooth the actual edges of this uh, mesh. So you can see here, it's starting to clean that up. And this is a great way to come through and just kind of clean this up, get just nice edges. So this is pretty good. Now these aren't too bad up here on the fingers, so I'm not too concerned about that, but it's just nice to know that that exists. 
if I do see a little bit of wonkiness there and there and right about there. Okay, that's good. So now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and go to geometry and then same thing, this is my go-to. Zebra measure, adapt, let's kick this up to like maybe 20 because we're almost at 100,000. So let's go something like that. Smooth groups, keep that down to zero, adaptive size, and let's save it because we've done some work. And let's hit zebra measure. You're, I'm interested in how you're going to shape his head with a cup. Yeah, when we finally get to the cup, we'll actually do that. That'd be fun. Maybe some squishy, squish, squish. What do you want to create? Um, you know, I'm more interested in creatures and monsters now. More than ever, I'm interested in creatures and monsters. I don't know where that came in. I've always loved, <clears throat> pardon me, I always loved vampires and werewolves and stuff. And so for me, that's, that's stuff I have heavy interest in. You know what? So this actually, cra so we had a hole here. So let's come over here to modify topology. Let's go to weld, close holes, weld points. Let's fix our mesh integrity. Boom, we had some errors. Let's fix that. No big deal. And now that 20 was not enough. So I'm going to kick this way up here. Just give him giant hands. There you go. <laughs> Hey, that one 3D artist, hello. All right, coffee time. There we go. All right, that's looking a lot better. That did not fail this time. So anytime you get that hole that occurred, that right there told me, that little hole that was in that palm, that told me a few things. One, it told me that I already had the hole. That hole existed and it couldn't stitch that on its own. Because zebra mesher is not designed to make things watertight. That's first and foremost. The second thing is that there was potential floating geometry somewhere. And that in itself is just not, not really a thing that I want, but I assumed the hole was the problem. So that's why I went to modify topology. I closed those holes and then I welded those points. Now that's a step I did on the body that I did not do on the hands. And you can see it resulted in a little bit of a possible failure. So that was enough information to know that I needed to go back and change that function. So that's why I went ahead and did that. And you can see here, and I also increased the resolution amount on the zero mesh because 20 just was way too low. And so now I can actually go up and that gave me about 53,000. But I'm gonna cut that in half because I want that a little bit lower. But I do want some topology in the hands because hands are a little bit of a, of a delicacy, right? So they're a little, little delicate. Now I have smooth groups turned on, so I need to go back to smooth because I do want to actually clean some of this up a bit. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a, just a nice little cleanup. Areas like this right here. These are, I need to tone these down a lot. And this will be, and then we can finish the hand area. I'm just doing like a smooth relax here. There we go. Now I'm gonna take the clay buildup brush and I'm gonna give them some knuckles. So I'm gonna build up some knuckle areas real quick. And a little bit of a smooth relax. And let's take the move brush and let's just. It's not, it's not moving anything. Why is that not moving? Oh, I have intensity down. <laughs> it's not moving because you have intensity turned down. Well, we don't want that, so. Oh, look at that. We got a hole. Boom, we got a hole right there. Boom. Well, that's going to be problematic. So let's come in here. And let's actually, and this is actually why I deal with, uh, I still use Dynamesh a lot. So we're gonna go ahead and close those holes and then weld those points. And then here, I'm gonna grab these two here and make that all one mesh. There we go. Not a big deal. It happens to the best of us. There we go. And then we can just go back to Z Remesher, same, Z Remesh that. Eh, 
And there you go. And see here, this edge right here, this edge, I'm gonna come up here to a Z remesher guy. And I'm going to just say, you know what, can you fix this edge for me? And I'm actually gonna increase this curve strength a bit. Do same. And let's see if it gives me a little bit better. That did nothing for me. Why didn't you listen to me? Listen to me. I want this like this. Please. Okay. Okay. It's it's telling me I'm stuck with it. That's fine. That's fine. You know what? I don't want to argue with you anyway. <laughs> Why are they faster? It was because you remeshed the union before you remesh the shapes. Um, the, the faceting happened, yeah. So the early faceting happened because it was low res and I had welded it that way. Um, but faceting will happen when you have super low topology. And then as you increase the density of that mesh, that faceting goes away. So like right now you can see the faceting. If I hit D for dynamic, it's a temporary subdivision smoothing. And so it just shows me what it would look like visually if it was subdivided up to level three and that goes away so when i did the remesher it took a smooth uh it took dynamic subdivision off showing me that it was still faceted it's just a preview and i work when i work low res i usually work with dynamic subdivision <clears throat> could i explain the reason why whenever i try to polygroup a base mesh i made in zbrush I get a hint that the mesh is partially selected. Is it masked? Hmm. It's partially selected. One second. No, that wouldn't that wouldn't be right. You're trying to you're trying to polygroup a base mesh. So you're you're trying to do this. You're trying to come in here and then you're trying to go control W. You're saying it's partially selected maybe your part of your mesh is hidden let me see nope that doesn't work either Ooh, that's a good one i feel like i should know this answer but i'm drawing a blank at the moment yeah exactly jamie <laughs> i'm trying to think a partially partially let me think about that for a second sorry partially mass oh okay I tried poly, tried, you tried to polygroup a base mesh you made in ZBrush and you got the hint that it was partially masked. Interesting. Uh, let me see something. No. What version of ZBrush are you in? I'm not, I'm not, honestly, I'm drawing a blank on this answer. I, I probably will think of it in a second. Um, but for some reason, I'm drawing a little bit of a blank, so I apologize. Um, it's partially masked, and, and you hit, do you hit control W, or are you hitting, or are you hitting, oh wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. <clears throat> Maybe I did think of it. Nope, not that one. Ah, okay. So you're hitting, you might be hitting control E, not control W. If you're hitting control E, that's a different function. And this is actually requiring a different thing. So, um, so you want to hit control W. That's probably what you're running into. And if you changed your hotkeys, that also might be resulting in something like that. You might've switched your hotkey. So I think you're hitting control E. Try hitting control W or just come over here to polygroups and hit um uh blah 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 you you know where it's there you know it's there <laughs> group from man that group from mask uh yeah yeah uh, hit group mask clear mask hit group mask clear mask that's that's what control w is essentially doing yeah but you might be hitting control e which uh that's a different function altogether yeah So yeah, so anytime you hit control W, that's group mass and clear mass. That's what that's doing. That's the control W. So doing that will do it. 
If you hit just group mask, it's just going to go ahead and reverse your mask and then group the section that you had, which is also pretty cool. So, but that's probably why you're getting that error. Awesome. Uh, which industry do you recommend to do the job in 3D gaming, advertisement, movie, or movie stuff? I, honestly, it depends on you and what you're passionate about. Like, what are you, what are you most interested in? I got into toys because I already had a massive background in manufacturing. Uh, I spent 12 years in aerospace manufacturing long before I picked up ZBrush. And so because I knew so much about mill work, lathe work, like G code, I used to actually program lathes and mills um, using Fanuc control. And so that's actually what a lot of 3D printers are using today is Fanuc coding. So you'll see like, you'll see your X, Y, Z coordinates. You'll see, you know, your rapid movements like GOO, GO1 is your feed movement. You'll see GO2, GO3, those are radius throws. So you'll usually see that coding inside of a 3D printer because it's very easy coding to actually understand it. And you can literally, like a language, in fact, if I know a second language, it's not anything, it's not speakable. It's for new control. I used to go through and actually read and tell you exactly what the program is doing from start to finish. And so um, I understood all of that. So when I was actually looking for work as an artist, I was looking as a sculptor, not a character artist. I was looking as a digital sculptor and toys became like the number one thing I noticed had a lot of job potential. And because I understood that manufacturing aspect, I already understood like what injection molds were, what kind of materials you were using between vinyl, Delrin, different types of plastics, etc. So I understood a lot of that already. So it made it easier for me to communicate to toy companies, um, you know, what it is that the, you know, I could communicate that information back to them. They could talk to me and they knew that I knew what was going on. So it was an easy, an easier in for me to communicate with toy companies because they always deal with that manufacturing side. And so when I got hired at Funko, it was really cool to always talk to the tooling guys and to understand like, yeah, this is what we're going for, you know? And I would try my best to help prepare the prints to be as, as uh, seamless as possible, you know? So little stuff like that. So it de but it depends on what you're passionate about. Like I was already doing a lot of 3D printing. And so I was really passionate in that and it made it a lot easier to get into it. So if you're into like, I wanna make a video game, then absolutely you wanna start leaning more towards games. Um, it's just all about, again, where where does your heart lie in that? What do you what do you wanna do? And what, do you, what would you like to see? And then from there, you can start looking at the different fields within that industry. And I'll tell you right now, 3D scanning is a big one. And there's a lot of work for that. I keep seeing job posts all the time on LinkedIn for people to clean up 3D scans and they definitely use ZBrush for that. And actually one of my friends, her name's Folly, awesome person. She actually does 3D scanning and stuff like that as well for work. And I also know a few other guys that actually deal with that uh, for freelance. So there's opportunity for that. So like games like your Call of Duty stuff, a lot of the stuff you see at one point or another started from a 3D scan. And the toy industry, the film industry leans into that a lot. For Iron Man, they actually scanned Robert Downey Jr. and then they built the suit around him. Cosplayers, like if you're interested in cosplaying and you really wanna like cosplay something perfectly fitted to you and you're working digitally, get yourself 3D scanned, which today it's becoming really easy to do that. You can do it all as I throw my phone. You can do it all from your phone now. Like you can literally have a friend of you take a ton of photos do, 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 all the way around you and then you can get that stuff built and uh, then you can have a 3D scan of you as a reference. I actually got myself 3D scanned um, at the summit a couple years ago when we had a guest, uh, we had the scan truck over and they actually gave, uh, they actually uh, scanned and gave me a scan copy, which is so cool of them. Super appreciative, but really awesome guys. So yeah, get yourself scanned. So that's another, that's another way that you can go about doing it. Okay. So these hands are okay. These hands are good enough for what we're trying to achieve. We're going to end up uh, kind of focusing a little bit more on the remainder stuff. We got about half an hour left before we end today's stream. You guys are doing, man, you guys' questions are super solid too, by the way, so that is, thank you. All right, so let's come over here, let's go geometry, and then of course we're gonna do our modified apology mirror and weld. 
and there you go. So now we have a good chunk of this base mesh built. Pardon me, so let's go ahead and save. And now we get to start looking at some of the design and building up some of the stuff and getting that body built the way we want. So yeah, he's looking adorable. So now we're gonna go ahead and we can hit save as, and we can go ahead and renumber our setting. Now you guys can't see this because I moved this over when I was looking for a file. So I'll come back over here and show you. So I could come over here and hit two, but if you're in 2023 or higher, you now have a save and a save next function. So if I hit save next, if there was a number system built in like, you know, underscore zero zero two, if I open this back up, you'll see that save next respected my naming convention and added the next number. And I think it does it up to five decimal places. So if you don't have a number there and you say save next, it'll actually add the three digit decimal underscore zero zero one, et cetera, et cetera. So, and it's just really cool. And so that's the way you can do it. And you can go ahead and just write over it, or you could just hit save on that button, which I've been doing. The base mesh is already made, you were saying, on the other one. Well, hopefully, uh, Sheriff, did that answer your question? You Like, you might be hitting Control-E instead of Control-W, because that Control-E is giving that same error. And that's what I think that's happening. So try hitting Control-W and see if that works for you. Okay. So now let's start blocking out this guy. Now, the first thing I want to do is actually get some color on him. I just like working in color. I think it's cool. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Z to open up this... Uh, the spotlight. Me, there he is. I'm gonna hover over uh, the colors that I want, and I want, I want this, I want this red. That's the red that I want. I'm gonna hit Z again. That's gonna hide that. I'm gonna go skin shade, and we're gonna go ahead and actually fill him out. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go up to color. It's all the way over here, Ian. Good job. I'm gonna hit fill color. I'm gonna go fill color, and we're gonna go fill color. Now, the thing is, is that I actually want to draw out Deadpool's design in paint first. I don't actually want to just start randomly sculpting. I want a little bit of something. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in Deadpool um, character sheet. I like to look up character sheets as much as possible, and I like to pull reference. So I can definitely come over and take a look and I can see this different stepping and stuff like that. So if I take a look and I see that here is kind of, you know, some of the ins and outs of how it looks, I can replicate a lot of this. And of course, too, he's a chibi character, but that doesn't matter. If you just go ahead and Google these, uh, these character sheets, nine times out of 10, that's gonna give you a lot of what you're looking for. And so cool, now I have something. So now what I'm gonna do is with the paintbrush, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to switch and we're going to end up painting black. So let's pick the body. Boom, we can paint black. Now, notice that it's going to be really low, low res, right? Because the model itself is low res. So I'm actually going to subdivide because I want to actually capture better topology because the, on the painting aspect of this, the paint is actually captured through the, ver the vertices, hence the term vertex color. It's just a based off that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take a look at the reference we got here, and we're just gonna go ahead and we're going to, and I'm actually, actually what we could do, we could do a mask, a quick mask selection here, where we come through and we just kind of quickly patch out the section right here. this section right here, say something like that. So we can just kind of quickly map that section out and then we can go ahead and say fill color. Now I don't want true black. The reason why we don't want true black is true black hides shadows. And if you have a hard time seeing shadows, usually it's because you have a really dark black color and that is actually preventing you from seeing shadows. So when I see black on a character, I typically lean a little bit more towards a deep gray. And this way, if I were to do a render on this, it's actually going to still show the, the shadow a lot more. Where true black, 
You still might see the shadow from time to time, but you see here it's a lot less visible in this area. That's because true black likes to, it really fakes infinite depth and that makes it a lot difficult. So I don't want that there. So I actually want this more of a gray here. So then again, I can now see all that shadow a lot more clearly. So if you're, if you're painting with true black or very dark, then I would actually lean that more in the gray zone. It's a lot more helpful. Okay, cool. And then here we actually have this part kind of a little bit more like this. I'm gonna, gonna just go ahead and boop, make that a little bit more like that. Wait, oh, I have, okay, see, I actually switched that to true black. So let's come over, get the right color. There we go, say something like that right there. And now we could start painting in the variation of it. So looks like, you know, we can kind of like make up our own little spot here. But so I'm gonna take the paintbrush, let's go up to stroke, and then let's go ahead and increase that radius a bit. Now here's the thing, if I need to paint true, true dark, I'm just gonna go up here to my tablet and turn up my pen pressure sensitivity. It's gonna give me nice sharp edges. That's actually what I want. Now I do have the red here, so that's pretty cool. So actually here, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to end up painting like this, boom. Yeah, something like that. And it looks to be just kind of slightly under his pectoral, which is fine. Now, this is the part where this is my only concept for this. Like, I don't have a character sheet of this, right? So I wasn't given that aspect because that probably wasn't created. So in that case, it's actually okay to kind of make this up. But so now the reference I'm pulling from is actually coming from uh, coming from the internet. Now, here's what's really cool is that if I press and hold shift with the lazy mouse, I can get a really nice sharp edge. So if you want sharp edges to start your draw and then press shift and then let go and that draws a straight line. So I start the, the line and then I let go and that gives me a nice sharp edge. Boop, say something like that. And then I'm gonna come down here, kind of paint this out just a little bit. I'm assuming his belt is gonna be, you know, somewhere right around here. So let's go ahead and just come in and taper this down. So I'm gonna same thing, I'm gonna come in here, do that. Maybe a little lower. Yeah, something like that. So I'm gonna come through, press and hold shift, let go shift. Yeah, so. Boom, like that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just switch my color so I don't have to keep pressing the Alt button. There we go. Paint that out. So we got a nice clean sketch on that. Now that might be a little bit far back and that's okay. So now I can come through here. I can just go boop. Just paint that back. Would you like to paint that back? All right, that's looking pretty cool. Now we do have a little bit of a step. They did draw a step right in here, which is really cool. So what I can do is I can then maybe lighten this up just a little bit. Say something like this, sharpen that up a bit. Actually, no, I, don't, I didn't need to do that. I need to do that. I need to just fill this with red like that. There we go. And now I'm gonna come through here. Like that. Go from here, boom, boom. Hey, that was pretty close. There we go, make that connection. And I can just isolate this arm real fast and we can do this. Noom, clean that up. 
Now I want to layer this in the actual model. I'm going to be using this color information to actually extract out the mesh that's going to be making this shape up. So this color is not just it's not just for visual looks, it's also for me to know that that's what is going to be there as a layer material. Not a problem. Super happy to help, honestly. All right. Now the back of him is not actually much different, but it's a little bit more tapered. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to focus on the back side of it. So we're going to here. Let's grab his body. Let's solo this out for a minute. There we go. And I can just hit one a bunch of times to repeat a stroke. So here, let's actually go up the stroke. I'm gonna increase the lazy mouse just a little bit more. Give me just a little bit more control here. Perfect. Now what I want to do here is I actually am going to just, I'm going to create a little bit of stepping. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go, boom, let that come. Now let's actually go a little lower. Let's go like this. Then I'm going to come straight down. Yeah, like that. There we go. And then here, actually, I'm going to taper this in. So I'm going to just go ahead and hold shift, kind of taper that inwards a little bit. And let's get a nice sharp edge here. So here I'm going to come through, just hold shift, hit one a few times, make that nice and sharp. There we go. Okay. So that's actually pretty decent. So let's go ahead and hit save. And now let's actually get a belt on him and we can start seeing him come to life a little bit more. <clears throat> now the fun part is I already made a katana sword or a type of katana sword. When I made my Leonardo piece, I made that sword from scratch. Part of me is like, you can make another sword from scratch, but really let's work smarter, not harder. <laughs> like let's absolutely just say, you know what? Let's do this instead. Let's turn around and we're going to load, and let's see if we can find that Leonardo piece. I have it here somewhere. In fact, ooh, in fact, you know what? I have it on a USB stick. Don't ask how I remember that, but it's bringing files over. I have it on a USB stick, so let me plug this in. There it is, there it is right there. Perfect. <clears throat> Get some water, one second. All right, as soon as it loads, I'm actually gonna take those, uh, the blades themselves. We're gonna make new sheaths, or we're gonna modify the sheath a little bit because it is Deadpool, and he obviously has something a little bit different. But with this model right here, right, I actually have these swords already made. So there's no point in me just, re you know, reinventing the wheel here. So I'm gonna come through here, go to Subtool, just gonna go to Copy, and I'll just go back to DP here. And I'm going to go ahead and hit paste. And, and look at that. That sword's, that sword's pretty much the size that we need it to be. That's pretty cool. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. Let me move this over. Say boop. Something like that. Let's put that more in the center. Let's rotate that around. That's fine. I think I have a T-posed version of this somewhere. Pretty sure that I do, but it's okay. We don't need to get perfect with it. We're not, we're not needing super perfection at the moment. So here is a, so here's my sword. And obviously his has a black handle and stuff, but let's scale this down to something a little bit more like this. And there we have this sword sitting here. 
So let's just put this behind him. Yeah, let's do that. Let's go ahead and rock this thing. And let's just kick this one over here. And then let's just switch this over. And then we're just going to go deformation. And we're going to go mirror. No, we can't mirror that because it has topology. So that's fine. I just want to mirror this on this side. I like to keep my swords separate. So I'm going to mirror that on that side. And then I'm going to go to geometry. And I'm going to reconstruct my subdivisions because I had subdivisions. So I can go ahead and just reconstruct that. And now I have these swords here. And then th that way I just know that's one more, th that's one less thing I got to worry about. But again, I can come in here and I can actually grab this sword and this sword. So I grab these two things. I'm going to go ahead and just add these as swords. Boom. Done. Easy enough to have, right? All right, let's give him a belt. So we're going to come in here. Now what we're going to do is actually we're going to merge him into a new folder and we're going to call this body suit there we go okay and now let's get like let's actually get um uh, a belt on him and the easiest way to do this is actually to replicate this uh, it's literally to just take the mesh in itself i already have it poly grouped so at this point there's no need of me kind of going through much more than i need to and so I don't have to guess. I'm just going to come in here, delete hidden. That's fine. And now I get to decide where that belt lives. And so what I get to do is go BZM for Z modeler, hover over an edge. I'm going to go poly group. I'm going to say this loop, this loop, this loop. That seems like a pretty decent, pretty decent loop to have right there. I'm going to go ahead and isolate that. I'm going to delete hidden. Okay. And now all I need to do at this point. I'm gonna grab the color, so I'm gonna hit Z. Come over here to this kind of beige color that they made, which is awesome. And then now we're just gonna Q mesh all of that out. Now I have subdivisions because I dropped that down. So let's pop that in, say something like that. And let's just give it a little bit of edge loop support. So I'm gonna come in here, add a little bit like that. And like that. This will help with the rounding. And then let's fill that color, boom, with that. And just like that, we're already starting to see him come to life. How do you erase the color if you did something you don't like in poly paint? That's a great question. So if you want to completely throw out all of your color, and then what you can do is just turn off that actual color. Um, so if I turn my color swatch to white and I come over here to the body, for example, and we hit save under each sub tool, you have the eyeball, which is visibility. Then you have this paintbrush. Anytime you colorize something or you paint it, then that becomes active. So what I can do is I can completely turn this off, right? Right there, turn that off and that now resets. Now I can turn this back on and get that color back. But the thing is, is that if I reset the color and I go back and I say color and I go to fill object, now I just completely erased that red and black. And now it just, it left me with a new color fill. Or you can just literally just go up here to color fill, pick a new color. So I'm like, oh, I don't like this. I just want to make it white again. And I can just fill that object, but it's toggled on and off because of that brush that brush icon on each sub tool. So if you wanted to paint something different or just reset it, just turn that off or just fill it with a new color and you can start over. But if you have more complicated stuff, like I was painting here and I was like, okay, so I'm painting and now I want to actually, you know, erase, like I make this stroke here. So let me grab this color right here. So I make this stroke here and I don't like this, right? then the color that it's next to, you're gonna to wanna to select that, and then you can paint that back. And you can kind of go through that approach. The other thing you can do as well, and I just realized I want that a little bit more sharp. Yay, that looks good. Let's go ahead and hit save. The other thing you can do as well is you can paint on a layer. So, you know, if let's say, I'm gonna duplicate this, and I'm just going to go ahead and fill this with white. So yeah, it's filled with white, now I wanna start painting. So now I can go to layers 
and then I can turn on a layer and then from here I can start come through I'm gonna record a layer so I'm gonna fill this object and switch this over I can start painting boom 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 now this gives me a little bit more exploratory stuff right because now I can turn that off and I can actually fade that down or I can delete it all together and that layer is gone so you can paint by a layer or you can just paint on top of your mesh whichever one you want to do the layer one is a little bit more of a safer approach because you can have more experimenting and you can also blend colors from one layer to another because you could paint on multiple layers but for me I just like I like painting directly on it because it's it's just the way I prefer it <clears throat> Oh yeah, you always forget to stop recording on a layer once I'm done. Absolutely. Cool extract uh, method using modeler. Had not thought of that. Absolutely, uh, Sto uh, um, Stolo. Absolutely. Because the thing is that I want this belt to fit perfectly, right? And so I already have good mesh underneath, so it's just a faster way to do it. Okay, great. So now what we're going to do here is, of course, we need to give him like some straps and stuff like that, because obviously he's gonna need to hold his sword. So we'll need to do that. And we also need to end up doing some pockets. I'm gonna start with the pockets first, or the, cause there's just like, it looks like on one side there's two, but you know, we can actually, if we look at the reference of actual Deadpool, it looks like there's just a ton of pockets going all the way around. And then of course we have the belt itself. So, you know, we assume that there's like three to four on each side just to play it safe just give room for the actual swords, and then we'll, we could just go ahead and make that. So let's let's ultimately do that. And we'll end up, if we don't get time to do the face plate, that's okay, because we'll follow up next week with the face itself. So we'll continue this character as we go through. I typically save the face for different, you know, for a more different time. Although, what I am realizing is I would like a little bit more of a chin here. So I'm just gonna pull that down just a little bit. There we go. A little bit more preference on that side. Okay, so let's make actually the uh, the pockets themselves. So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that on over. Let's move this up. Let's go ahead and hit save. Perfect. Okay, and now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make our, um, um, yes, our stuff and things. Uh, let's actually call these hands. I'm gonna make the, uh, the, the bags the bags on the side so let's go ahead and do insert and let's go ahead and do a cube yes a cube a beautiful cube and let's actually just keep with the color of this guy right here so i could just hit c on that that's the color we want now this topology is not obviously the best topology for this so what we want to do is you know we have this nice little point this nice little end gone over here we don't want that so let's go to initialize and let's just hit q cube but let's drop this resolution down all the way to zero. And then I'm going to hit control W to make this all one thing. And we're going to Z modeler this. So we're going to add a little bit of modeling today. You don't think the swords will interfere with the belts anyway? Yeah, that's true. It may not, but you know, we'll see. We'll see what we can do. We got to add uh, sheaths and then we have to, um, and then we got to add a little spot that makes sense. So also the pocket, yeah, the, the the pocket the belt pockets aren't going to be too crazy. Okay. Hi, what is the process for the textures to show in the 3D print? So, if you want textures to show in the 3D print, the easiest thing to remember is you want uh, to push the actual textures harder than you would anticipate. So, and a good way of doing that is actually going up to uh, render and go to preview AO and turning that on. And if we go back to the body for a second, actually, if we go back to Leonardo for a second. Okay, so if we go back to Leonardo for a second. This is something that I was working on. So we go back to him and I, I'm gonna be 3D printing him soon enough. If I really want these muscles to really show that separation, then I'm gonna wanna really push this. So I'm gonna come through here And I would really want to cut this in. This might be a little bit much, but I would actually work in cutting this in a lot more. 
say something like this, because what happens is when you 3D print, this is really sloppy, but you hopefully you understand what I mean. Um, when you 3D print, even with resin printing, even with today's technology, you have to assume that you're gonna lose about five, 10, maybe 15% of your actual resolution when it prints, depending on the micron that you print at, i.e. the layer height. A lot of times like resin printing, most people default at 50 microns. That is really good. Like that's gonna hold a lot of information. You can 3D print at much higher resolution. So say something like 25 microns. So the lower the number, the better resolution you're gonna get. However, that's the long time for the print, but 50 microns is quite good. So I wouldn't scoff at that in any way, shape or form, but you're still going to lose a percentage of that texture and resolution in the print. And you know, with, with filament printing, it's getting a lot better, but still, you really wanna push that texture. So what you wanna do is, you know, again, if we're doing some nice lines and stuff like that, you really want to push that. And there's a few features to help you with this. So I'm going to back this up for a second. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just press, uh, I'm actually here, let's clear this chibi Deadpool over here for a second, and just hit solo. So here, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a history marker right up here at the top. And there is this slider right here called adjust last. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come through and I'm going to start pushing some of this in. Say something like that. Okay, say something like this. Now I purposely didn't take this model to be super, like I didn't want him so shredded with like, you know, 2% body fat. I wasn't going for that look. So I was a lot more subtle with him. But let's say I do something like this, something like this. Okay, just something like that. Now check this out. Because of this history marker, this adjust last up here, now when I slide this, I can push this further or I can dial it back. So I can make it softer or I can make it deeper. Now, obviously you don't want this. This is not what you want. But what you wanna do is make your cuts and then maybe push that in just a little bit more. Just push that a bit more and then you can kind of smooth and work that out. And then when you print something, kind of take a look at it. And if it looks really close to what you're getting, then you, you cut deep enough. And it's the same thing with textures. Like a lot of the skin detail that I have on here, a lot of this is just gonna be very small and hard to see. And that's okay, I actually wanted that. But if we do want this texture in itself to be a little bit more, then actually what you can do is, I'm gonna start all the way over, is we have a few brushes for that. And we have contrast brushes. So we have contrast, I believe it's Delta, and contrast target. So contrast Delta and target, the difference between the two is, is that I believe it's the, oh, I'm also pushing real heavy resolution here. So let me dial that back just a little bit. Okay. So the contrast Delta is going to push and push and push and push and push. And it's just going to push all of that surface detail. And it's going to continue to do that. And it can get quite heavy, or you can go with the contrast target. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna you know, allow you to hit more of that surface area, but not push it as hard. So you can come through and actually line a lot of this stuff up and you can push the surface detail a lot more. So if I really wanted this to get pushed, I would just come through and start painting this in and get a lot of that information built in there. The other way, if you want, like I need to just do it all really, really fast. I'll tell you, be careful with it, but you can do it. You want to go really fast go over here to deformation and there's a contrast slider and this will do everything if i slide that up let's push that up real hard that will do everything really quickly but you want to be careful because if you have points and stuff that might come to a sharp edge you might actually push that too far but say say something like that for this would actually work a lot better so this was before right here Let's just stamp that and then go back over. And now this is the after. So you can push that surface detail that way and it'll be a lot easier to go through it. So it just depends on what you wanna do ultimately. Perfect, perfect. So hopefully that answered that question, but yeah, there's a lot of possibilities there. Not a problem. Okay, let's go back and let's make the pocket and then that's gonna be it for the day. 
So let's come through here real quick. Boop, we're gonna put this guy right back over here. And then let's come in and let's grab this. And we're gonna, what's another name for it? It's a, it's a belt bag. That's fine. I'm gonna hit solo for a second. Okay. Yeah, give that technique a shot. Hello, is it possible to pose the model without damaging it too much for retouching? It depends on your topology. Ultimately, at the end of the day, my opinion is have it in your mindset that when you are posing, you're going to destroy your model. You're gonna break your model. Unless you have a nice rig and you, you spend time, you know, which ZBrush doesn't, ZBrush, you can make a Z-Sphere rig and that's possible. But like, if you wanna like, you're trying to do animation and you have a nice rig and you're doing a uh, 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 weight painting and you're actually like, figuring out those deformation spots, then that's completely different. And obviously you'd be working outside of that, like something like in Cinema 4D. Um, however, in ZBrush, a lot of times you will probably break your model more times than not. Uh, depends on your topology. And even still, as you're posing and moving your topology, you wanna make sure to kind of do small corrections. So if everything is welded together, then those corrections as you raise the arm, this is a good indicator. Like this, this movement right here is very hard to achieve in ZBrush without breaking it. So you need to know, first off, how that joint is moving. And then as you rotate it, you're gonna need to fix things along the way. So you are gonna need to move mesh around. So it's going to break almost all the time, but you're gonna be fixing that as you're moving the mesh around. So it's important to remember that. It is possible, yes, to do it without breaking the model, but you gotta take your time, you gotta be patient, and you just have to go through and do it. Yeah, Pouch, thank you so much. Satchel, Pouch, this is why I have you guys here. <laughs> but Deadpool might call it his belt bag. If we agree that he would call it his belt bag, I'll leave it, but I think you guys are more right than I am. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Not a problem. Yeah, I'm, let's leave it as belt bag. <laughs> <laughs> My belt bag. <laughs> uh, he did call it a duffel bag in the movie. Okay, you know what? My pouch. He might call it a pouch. You guys are right. Let's go with that. Or is it more bougie to call a satchel? Okay, what do we want? Let's, let's vote on this. Should we call this a satchel or a pouch? I obviously can't decide. <laughs> he might call it a fanny pack or something too. Ooh, he might. He might, you're absolutely correct. The world is our oyster here. <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do now is let's actually come through here. Let's hit save real quick, just to make sure, cause I don't remember the last time I saved that. And then now, okay, so what we're gonna do here is let's just give us some topology. So we just gave us a basic shape. We're not really going for reinventing the wheel here too much. We got some basic shapes. So let's go ahead and just give us some different edges like this. Bada bing, bada boom. Just real simple, right? Something, not, nothing too crazy. And then what we're gonna do next <clears throat> is we're going to give ourselves a temporary selection. Boom, boom. So this temporary selection is now gonna become a polygroup. So let's go polygroup and let's go polygroup all. Click and just make this a different selection set all together. I need some water. Satchel is like a purse, a separate thingy. Okay, that's fair. <clears throat> I love belt bag. All right, let's keep it a, okay. Oh, okay. So we could keep it belt bag. I like belt bag too. Let's call it belt bag. We're going back to belt bag. You guys are amazing. <laughs> All right, let's do this. So now we're gonna come here and we're going to go to Q Mesh and we're gonna drag out a copy of this. So I'm, the way to do this right now is as I start doing QMesh extruding, I'm gonna go ahead and press control and I'm gonna drag this out just like this and give it some space. Now I'm gonna control shift, I'm gonna grab that. Let's put this all in a folder. So our belt bag, and that just sounds cool. <laughs> some people are like, no, <laughs> no it doesn't. And let's go ahead and separate our hidden. So now we have this guy and we have this guy here. Let's go to V2 and let's turn our belt bag back on so we can stop with the solo for a second. And let's turn this guy on. And now what we can do at this point is we can kind of shape this, uh, the flap of our belt bag. We're committing to this, by the way. We are committing to the belt bag. Okay, 
So now we're gonna turn on symmetry and I'm actually gonna just go ahead and come in here and mask off this area and we're gonna pull these up just a bit. And then I'm gonna mask off this area and we're gonna pull this up just a bit. Like that, give us a little bit more rounding here. Okay, and then let's come through here like this. This edge can come up just a little bit. Perfect, that's gonna be nice. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to bow, I want to kind of like round these these corners off just a little bit. So I'm actually going to come through and with Z Modeler, we're going to add in a second edge loop. This one's going to be more of like our own because I want to, I want to make this a radius. So I'm going to do something like this and I'm going to delete that edge like that. And then we're going to go to multiple edge loops. We're going to go interactive elevation and we're going to bow this like that. Now we're going to do the exact same thing. So we go single side, we're going to add this guy and this guy, we're going to delete this. And if we go back here and I touch that one time, it's going to give us that nice rounding shape. And that's going to help us have that, that kind of curvature to it. Now, if we come back here, of course, so when we go to delete this, that's going to give us a different result. So instead, what we're going to end up doing is we're just going to allow the bag to naturally round itself off. And we can control this a little bit more with our edge loop controls. So here, if I want the size of this bag, if I want the sides here to actually have a nice sharper fall off, but then a little softer on top, what I'm gonna do is actually just turn on symmetry and we're just gonna give it a little bit of support like this. And then the bottom is gonna get a little bit more supported like that. So then when I do this, it now gives me a lot better of control at the sides and on the bottom, but I have nice rounding here at the top. And that's also gonna match the flap of the belt bag. So the interface, so fun fact with the ZBrush, the interface is completely customizable. So of course, we're always looking at ways to kind of, you know, take a look at, you know, ease of use and so forth. But I use the default method of ZBrush, but definitely it is 100% customizable. If you, uh, the more you work in ZBrush, you can come up here to preference, you can come up here to custom UI, and you can go ahead and change all of that. Speaking of which, I just remembered, I need to turn back on my tablet pressure, so let's do that. So you can go ahead and completely, so you can save out your own UIs and make it completely customizable to you. I work in the default because I teach it a lot and getting started, it gets confusing if I have a, if a custom UI. However, that being said, again, we are always taking a look at that stuff, but we don't wanna make major changes quickly because that actually might break workflows instead of helping workflows. So yeah, it's always a conversation that we're talking about. But whether or not there will be something in the future, it's hard to say. If I tell you yes today, it will be, and it never happens, then you'd be mad at me. <laughs> if I tell you no and it comes out tomorrow, you'd be like, hey, you didn't, you know, come on. You said no. So it, it just depends. It's always something that we're looking at. And honestly, the more feedback that we hear from the user base, the more I teach it on, you know, it shows like NAB when I go into studios or my IBC, Adobe Max, which I'm going to be a lot of those this year. I'm going to be at GDC, NAB, IBC. I'm going to be at um, uh, Adobe Max. I'll be at Monster Palooza. So a lot of shows and, and then two, a lot of training sessions. So it's, you know, it's, we always hear these feedback come in and then that helps us determine whether or not we should be making those changes or not. So it's always a good conversation that we're having internally. But just know you can completely customize the UI and that's super fun. And also after a while, you just love the look and feel of it. At least I do. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick, uh, just a relax on this edge loop here. Just say something like that, that's fine. Okay, great. Now, if I see how I did a relax, but now I kind of boosted that up a little bit. This is single-sided geometry. So with clip curve, I can actually kind of go boop and I can clip that back just a little bit. So I could just clip curve that back to a flat plane and that will help me out as well. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of trick. So I spaced this out in something that I thought was gonna be really beneficial to me on the distance between the flap of the belt bag and the actual pouch section of the belt bag. So now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go Q mesh. And I'm going to push this in. So I'm going to do this because I want to see the actual distance between the two. Now notice 
and I know you're already saying you just flipped the normals and you're absolutely 100% correct. But the reason why I did this is that I really get to see the distance on the inside of how close I am to the actual surface of the pouch section of the belt bag or the opening of the belt bag. So now I just come out here to uh, display properties and I just flip that normal and all is right in the world, I guarantee it. And then here what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to just come through, mask this section off. I'm gonna inverse that and now check this out. I'm gonna go ahead and that trick with the control drag to duplicate a subtool, I'm gonna do that here to duplicate an edge loop. And I'm gonna rotate this around. I'm gonna move this inwards like this. I'm actually going to kind of, actually instead of rotating it like that, I'm just gonna kind of push this in, say something like that. And I'm gonna do it one more time and I'm gonna push that in like that. Now I can turn around and rotate this and then make this more boom, 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 boom. Okay, great. And now I'm actually going to squeeze that in just a little bit. Actually, what I'll do instead of squeezing it in like that, I'm actually gonna come through and I'm gonna mask off this section. Maybe soften that just a little bit, give me a smoother transition. Kind of get that pushed in there like such. And then I'm gonna go make some smaller changes like that. Now what I am gonna do here is this is too squared off. This is way too, like this will be too sharp. If I subdivide this, it's gonna be too round. It's gonna be like that, and I don't want that. So we're gonna actually go back to Z Modeler, and we're gonna hover over this edge. We're gonna multiple, and you guessed it, interactive elevation. So I'm gonna add some topology. I'm gonna go left to right to go in and out. I'm gonna go up and down to add those, the edge flow that I need. And I'm gonna do something like that. Now that's gonna give me some thickness and it's gonna look a lot more natural. And there we go. Now uh, we're one o'clock, so we're almost, we're pretty much done here. So the last thing I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna to go to clothing here. I'm gonna grab a snapping section and I'm gonna go ahead and give me a little bit of a button. I'm gonna just center that here. And then this will be the belt bag as it is, boom. And I'm just gonna color that kind of gray to replicate metal. Okay, and then I'm gonna hide that. Actually, what I'm gonna do here, let's just do a quick, okay, perfect. And then I'm gonna just replicate this color. I'm gonna go color and fill that, and then let's go color. fill let's go color oh it's masked off that's why let's go color fill boom and now we have this so next week what we're going to do is continue the design build we're a few hours in but we already have a base mesh built for another chibi type character we're already into the deadpool look and feel so there's a lot of stuff that we've done so awesome stuff today guys and that's where we'll end it today. Great questions. It's always an awesome, it's always awesome to come in and hang out. So real quick before you guys take off, something I want to point out real fast as I get my space back in. I want to say this before you uh, end the stream. It is extremely enlightening to watch you work. Thank you so much, Sheriff. I really appreciate that. It means a lot. And um, that's part of, honestly, it's an, a joy. It's a joy to actually be able to stream and to hang out and to to design on the fly and so and also to answer questions that's what we're here for this is one of the things i love the most about my job is i get to just come in and hang out with you guys so thank you all for being here super appreciate that real quick if you guys are trying to get into zbrush and you are a student or a teacher i just want to let you guys know that we have a ton of packages of course we have a partnership with maxon and adobe but if you come here to the student section for $20 USD or equivalent in whatever your region, you can actually get Maxon One. So if you're a part of an EDU, you definitely want to uh, check that out. It's If you're a teacher, if you're a student, you're at a university, you're in high school, and you definitely want to check this out. So give that a go. It'll let you do so many things, but definitely check that out. And that being said, thank you guys again so much for everything. And yeah, Carbon 44444. I finally sit in on the stream. So awesome to have you here, man. All right, dude, that's going to be it. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great one, and I'll see you next week. Bye for now. Bye, 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 bye.